Two two, uh, Sam to Sam to JJ.
everything's plugged in to the 300, no matter how well it's going to work.
front off stage is that.
and a very good evening. We're joining you live here in Sheffield for a great night of boxing. We've got plenty of action ahead. Alongside me, I'm Stacey Copeland. I've got Spencer Oliver, former European super bantamweight champion with me uh, for this evening. We've got a cracker here in the Steel City, Spencer. Home to many former champions, Johnny Nelson, Prince Naz, Kel Brook, uh, Harold Graham, of course, and the new generation, the likes of Dalton Smith, and of course, the home of GB and England boxing at the EIS just up the road. So very much a city entrenched in boxing history and legacy. Absolutely. Listen, this city has a uh, history, like you say, of producing champions. The famous Ingle gym, you know, the still city gym that's now flying as well. And like, it's great to be a part of this, actually. You know, it's great that TalkSport are investing in the smaller hall shows and giving these fighters the exposure that they need because, Stace, you know how difficult it is in the, you know, the world that we live in now for these young fighters to get off. They, they fight for next to no money at all. They don't get the exposure, but Talk Sport investing in these smaller hall shows gives them that exposure. It's really important. And of course, we've got some cracking fights lined up. So the main event, uh, the Commonwealth Lightweight Silver defence for the championship. Keenan Wainwright in with uh, Louis Horn. That's going to be a cracker. But plenty of entertainment on the undercard. And Spencer, sometimes that is precisely what makes a great show. It's all very well having a good main event, but you want a good, solid, competitive undercard. And we've got that tonight. We've got the likes of the White Rhino, Dave Allen, making his comeback in the back of that loss against Fraser Clark. We've got Billy the Kid Pickles. You've got American James Wilkins. We've got some good action on the undercard to look forward to. Absolutely, like you say there, Stan. So it's not just about, you know, the young prospects coming through. It's about the guys that are trying to revive their careers. People like Dave Allen, you know, people that many people have seen before. They've seen him at the highest level, you know, boxing people like David Price, uh, packed out O2 Arena. And he's back now here, grinding away, trying to get back to those heights again. And, um, yeah, James Wilkins, he's got the famous Roy Jones Jr. in his corner. He's backing him. Roy's here tonight as well. So, it's, you know, it's going to be a fantastic night of boxing. On, on paper, this looks like a great show. It is, and this is the lifeblood of the sport. Yes, we love those big main events, but this is where it begins for a lot of boxers pursuing their dreams right from the start. And the fans that get behind them um, are, are there for the duration of that journey because the big nights don't come without these. So really important that we get the prospects to have the opportunity to fight on shows like this. So without further ado, let's get the action underway. We've got Thomas Crowder and Dale Arrows Smith, our first bout to kick us off for the evening. Let's go to our MC, Robert Blundell. Well, we're just awaiting the fighters at the moment. This first one, Thomas uh, Crowder and Dale Arrowsmith. So, Tom Crowder um, sort of... <laughs> I mean, it, this is exactly what we're talking about, Spencer, isn't it? The importance of young fighters getting opportunities on shows like this. This is where we talk about ticking the boxes. Absolutely. Listen, Stace, like Tom Crowder is 3-0 as a professional. He's boxing Dale Ar 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 Arrowsmith, who's 1-6, lost 103 and drawn four. This guy has been there, seen it, done it, been in with everyone and rarely gets stopped. So this is what the sport is all about, development of the young fighters. Tom Crowder is the prospect in this one. And Arrowsmith will give him, will give him those valuable rounds that he needs and that's really really important for a young fighter's career yeah, it certainly is let's have a quick word about dave allen because he's a real fan favorite he's a real character of the sport lots of people on social media asking when he was going to be on what time he's fighting so lots of the crowd here will be here to watch him in the flesh because he was on a massive card last time on the eubank smith undercard in manchester so it's great for fans to see him up close here if they haven't had the chance before absolutely listen you're talking about like tom crowder there and we go from one extreme to the other dave allen is a guy that i've just mentioned you know o2 arena top the bill there against david price you know he's been there seen it done it beat lucas brown a former world heavyweight champion so you know he's got a wealth of experience and for, for his hometown fans to see him in the flesh in an arena like this is, is a great thing you know and Dave is a big character of the sport come on talk sport earlier in the week actually and he's you know a fantastic character and he cares about fighters he's now looking after fighters managing fighters training fighters you know real backbone of the sport of boxing and uh, it's good to see him still 
still trying to crack on, still trying to reach those heights. And um, yeah, he's in with an interesting opponent here in Jake Darnell. You know, he's not won many fights, but he'll come here and he'll try and give it a go. And it's another chance for Dave Allen to try and shake a little bit of that ring rust, really. Yeah, it'll be an interesting one. We've got Mason Dickinson on as well. We've got Billy Pickles, Adrian King. He's an interesting one, Spencer, because he's a very, very young, up-and-coming talent, just 19 years old in the heavyweight division. Curtis Woodhouse, his coach, is, of course, a well-known former British champion, has really got big hopes for him. Yeah, he certainly has, you know, and I'm looking forward to seeing exactly what he's going to bring to the table here because, like you say, Curtis Woodhouse is one of those guys that's sort of like been there, seen it, done it. He understands the and he has high hopes for him so it's going to be interesting to see him in his second professional contest absolutely well as you can hear plenty to look forward to lots of context and stories behind these fighters which we'll go into more but let's get ready to get the action underway and go to our MC for the official introductions Robert Blundell ladies and gentlemen Sport, proudly presents an evening of professional championship boxing. Welcome to Steel City Showdown! We are now ready to get going with our first contest of the evening. Four rounds of action in the Super Welterweight Division. Please welcome our first boxer to the ring from Manchester, Dale the Crown. Dale Arrow Smith making his way to the ring, then a very experienced journeyman, became a centurion last year. This will be his 114th contest, and he should give Thomas Crowder a decent test tonight, as Spencer was saying before. At this stage in a fighter's career, it's about ticking those boxes, and we may see that tonight. Yep, interesting to see how this one goes. Another good test for Thomas. Crowd up here against a very and experienced and opponent. Please welcome his opponent to the blue corner from Sheffield, Thomas Crowder. Well, he was due to fight last October, Thomas Crowder, that fell through, so he'll be looking to get his 2024 off to a winning start. He said that he's keen to move up to six rounders next, so Spencer, he'll want to put in a solid performance tonight Absol to build on going forward. Absolutely, Stace, that's exactly what it's all about. It's about putting on those solid performances. It's not just about getting the win on uh, when you get opportunities like this, you know, we're showcasing your skills, yes, you want to go out there, but you want to make a statement. And he's got a chance to do that against Dar da Dale Arrow Arrowsmith because hey, he's a very experienced opponent who will test Mr. him. Mr. Dennis Hobson for Fight Academy, live on Fight Zone and TalkSport. Proudly presents four rounds of boxing in the super welterweight division. All of tonight's action is sanctioned by the British Boxing Board of Control. Our area representatives are Alan Ulster and Matt Verity. For this contest, our timekeeper at the bell is Anthony Rushton. And our referee in charge, scoring the action, star referee Howard Foster. Sheffield, that is our officials. It is now time to introduce our boxers. Introducing first and boxing out of the red corner. Winning the black shorts. On the scales, he weighed in 11 stone and 1 pound. This evening, taking part in his 115th contest as a professional from Manchester, Dale.
Ladies and gentlemen, please welcome his opponent facing him across the ring and boxing out of the blue corner. Weighing the black shorts trimmed with silver. On the scales, he weighed in 10 stone, 11 pound and 1 ounce. He comes to the ring a perfect professional record. Three wins from three contests from Sheffield! Both know the rules, keep it clean, break straight away with toes. Both got your heads in close, but not too much. Well, a good one to kick us off for the Steel City showdown this evening in Sheffield. Stacey Copeland here alongside Spencer Oliver. We've got Thomas Crowder fighting out of the blue corner in the black shorts with uh, TC on his waistband, and Dale Arrowsmith fighting out of the red corner, also in black shorts with the silver trim. He's got the uh, height and reach advantage, Arrow Smith Spencer. Yep, he certainly has, and he'll be boxing on the back foot, using that perimeter of the ring, just trying to stay out of trouble, as he always does. He's a great survivor, is Arrow Smith, and this is going to be an interesting way to see if Crowder can get inside, break that rhythm, break that defence of Arrow Smith. Scheduled for four threes, this one. Made his debut in uh, May 2022, Tom Crowder. He had a bit of a dust-up, so he had to have a bit of a gap of almost 10 months to allow those various wounds to, to heal. He was last out in July last year, a four-rounder points win. That was at the Magna Centre in uh, Rotherham. And as I said before, he does want this to be his final four-rounder, Spencer, so he can start to step up to six-rounders, and that's an important part of development at this stage, isn't it? Absolutely. I think, you know, having freed now, this is his fourth four round there is time to move up you don't want to stay down there too long you don't want to get too comfortable doing this shorter distance six rounds is definitely the next move but Crowder here looking to impress and he starts well on the front foot takes center of the ring he's worked that body well he's looking to loop the right hand over the top as well so nice confident start here from Crowder well he's a experienced and uh, active and busy journeyman Dale Arrowsmith he's a uh, 29 bouts last year. This is his seventh outing tonight of 2024. He manages fighters uh, as well, so well known on, on the circuit. And as you said, he'll look to keep it at range, Spencer. And um, Tom Crowder's uh, got to obviously find a way to uh, to find his way through. There's very, very bright lights that have just come on now. I think uh, if you're in any doubt and unable to see, you definitely can now, Spencer. Absolutely, yeah. That was a little shock to the system for me. I don't know what he'd done to the two fighters up there, but to be fair, they kept their composure states very well. I don't know if we're good, no, good enough looking <laughs> to be under these lights, Spencer. <laughs> Prefer it dark. <laughs> they need to dim them back down quick, don't they? We definitely look better in the dark. <laughs> it's, uh, and that's something that, you know, both of them, to be fair, I mean, that was startling for us, uh, Spencer, sat ringside. But for the fighters, that's something you do have to deal with, isn't it? Out of your control, sometimes these things happen and both have, have stayed composed and just focused on the task. Absolutely. I'll show you. I'll tell you what it done. It, it highlighted to us that they're both totally focused because they didn't flinch at all. Crowder still stalking forward, still trying to break the defence of Arrow Smith. Arrow Smith doing a great job, like he always does, boxing on the outside, fiddling his way through the round. What do you make of that opening round then, uh, Spencer? Yeah, do you know what? It was a good confident start there from Thomas Crowder. He come forward, he was working well behind the jab, switching the shots downstairs. He was trying to use his imagination a little bit, winging the right hands over the top as well. But Darrell Arrow-Smith, as, as he always does, done a great job of just staying out of distance, controlling the distance in many ways, working behind the jab, lifting the elbows, defensively very good, standing in the corner. You know, this is like water off a duck's back to Arrow-Smith right now. Just taking a look at some of the action in that first round. Here we see crowd up, just stalking forward, looking for the openings to that body, and then winging those right hands over the top as well. A dominant round from Crowder, but Arrow-Smith in no problem... Uh, coping with it no problems at all absolutely what do you want to see Spencer at this stage so Tom Crowder has said he wants to move up to six rounders after this 
for you, if you were coaching or managing him, what would you want to see here in a four-rounder before you're happy to move him up? Right, what, what we need to see from Crowder now, Stace, is that we need to see him using his imagination a little bit, like not being predictable. You know where the shots are coming from. Let's see if he can work the angles. Like, try and break the defence of, of Arrowsmith, because Arrowsmith will see him coming in, in straight lines all the time. He'll know where those shots are coming from. For Crowder, he needs to step off the line, come round the side, switch the shots up to the body and up the middle as well. Do something that's very unpredictable. Unpredictability wins in this sport. He's got good support in here tonight, Tom Crowder. In fact, on the way in, I bumped into his grandparents and his girlfriend who uh, had that mix of nerves and excitement and pride and it's so important isn't it that's something that's easy to forget just what it means to fighters and their families and supporters absolutely you know what like this is that this is the grassroots of the sport this is where it comes from like you know you look around and you see here and there's i don't know maybe four or five hundred people in here and they go all these fighters have got dreams and aspirations of reaching those heights and getting on those big shows you know filling shows like the o2 and all these big arenas like the ar arena etc but everybody starts here this is the beginning of it and really the backbone of the sport and the parents are obviously and the girlfriends and and whatnot and, and, and you know they're the ones that do get the nerves they are the ones that are sitting there biting their nails while these two are in there and they seem to be enjoying it to be fair Have you seen, one of the things that you look for, Spencer, is those little adjustments between rounds. You only have a minute to take on the information. Anyone who's box knows that you need those short, sharp, you need clarity from your, your corner, but then they're looking for whether you can go uh, and execute that. Do you see improvements from the first to the second round from Crowder? Well, that's what that's what we were talking about, Stacey, is that adaptability. And, you know, fighters that have got that adaptability are the ones that can go on and, you know, go a long way. And they're the ones that can develop. For Crowder at the moment, he's doing the same thing. He's walking forward. He's looking for those openings. He's being nice and patient, showing good patience, whipping that right hand to the body like we just saw there. But I want to see a little bit more now. I want to see an injection of pace. Well, this is a four-rounder. It's a sprint. It's not a marathon. So let's see him go through the gears now show me that you've got something a little bit different if you shut your eyes and you listen to the punches you'd hear the same beat the same timing Put we a need nice to see injection together the pace. there on arrow smith he did try and find a way through and that of course is something that's really difficult sometimes with particularly experienced journeymen they can be defensively astute spencer they can be quite evasive they make it difficult for these fighters to find a way through and that of course is exactly what they're in there to do give them problems to solve absolutely listen arrow smith's lost 103 he's drawn three he's won six but every now and then they like to throw in a victory they do try that little bit harder you know and um, if he fancies it he'll pick it up and of course people outside boxing will look at some of the records of journeyman and say they've lost how many but there is a skill to losing and it might not make sense if people are not familiar with the sport of boxing Spencer but there's a difference between being beaten up in there and being smart and clever and savvy and getting prospects through the rounds there's a real skill to it absolutely listen I boxed a, a, a journeyman called Des Gargano in my first bout Curtis's dad yeah absolutely yeah, yeah. and he'd lost 113 won about 14 and I thought you you know what I'm just coming out of the Commonwealth Games I thought I was a kid I was going in there that was the biggest lesson I ever learned in boxing yeah I won the fight but he showed me the way around the ring he showed me the ropes and that was that was highly important as Arrowsmith is doing here to Chowder you know he's teaching him the tricks of the trade in there and Chowder will learn a lot when he looks back from this one but again we see some good work there in that second round from Chowder well, we're seeing in the highlights there from Crowder sometimes falling a little bit short, Spencer, just out of range. But when he steps in and puts the combinations together, he looks more effective. So perhaps finding that range is something that he'll want to do in this uh, third round. Yeah. He's got to be careful, Chowder, when Arrowsmith opens up. He's a little bit straight backed. He's keeping his head up there. He's not moving off the line, so he's a sitting target. Now he's going to have to work on that. That's something he needs to go back to the gym and work on. He needs to move after his shots because he's a sitting target. And that when he moves up the levels, moves up the rounds, is a dangerous thing to do. When you're coming in in straight lines, Spencer, you are open. And sometimes against a taller fighter with that those long levers you can be open to those uppercuts uh Arrowsmith hasn't adopted that just yet but i've seen him do it in other fights it is a a good shot that he can bring in sometimes the crowd is going to want to just um 
keep it, are you happy with his work rate here as well and sometimes it's important to change the pace isn't it to show that you can dominate you slow it down you speed it up do you want to see a little injection of pace somewhere from him spencer yep stace that's what i'm talking about going through that's what i was saying in the last round now this is a four round sprint it's not a 12 round fight so let's see that injection you need that injection to catch the public Good imagination work on the inside from both fighters who are happy to open up together good jab there from Amos Smith Crowder just perhaps switched off for just a second and shipped that one straight down the pipe as they end up in a little bit of a tangle here on the inside it is raising in intensity a little bit here Spencer in the third round which is what we want to see yeah good no. shot to the body there with the lead hand from Crowder yeah, good work there from Crowder, and as you say, Arrow Smith, nice and relaxed, he's enjoying himself in there, as he does week in, week out, he's probably got four or five fights lined up, so his main objective in this contest is to stay out of trouble, but, and he's doing a good job of doing that, because he's taking the play away from Crowder, who's not really showing us that, that injection of pace that we need to see, he's stalking forward, just falls short with the right hand there, but Arrow Smith doing a good job of turning him around. Well, he just uh, lost his balance there and his foot in Spencer. He just leaned over that, that front foot, of course. Something, again, that is, you know, is, is, is part of experience, isn't it? Not falling in. His, his eagerness to get the backhand off that double jab. Just saw him fall over that front foot and lose his balance, balance yeah, there. Because the nice work from Harry Smith on the inside there with an uppercut to the body. Yeah, the problem he's got there is he's trying to close the gap with his hands and not his feet. He needs to move his feet first, then let the shots go, and you won't fall over your front foot. We're seeing some antics and showboating now from Harry Smith, which you do get from journeymen sometimes. Again, something that mentally young prospects have got to deal with, to not allow it to frustrate them and stick to their plan. Absolutely, yep, and that's exactly what Aris was trying to do, get inside Chowder's head, because Crowder is the one that's winning these rounds, you know, dominant, good left hook there from Crowder, probably the best shot he's thrown for some time. Timed that so well, Spencer as well, he was got himself in range, brought his feet in, and a lovely lead hook there from Thomas Crowder, he'll be pleased with that to finish the third round, what do you want to see from him now going forward? We need a grandstand finish now from Thomas Crowder. He's, he's, he's in control, he's winning these rounds. Arrowsmith's doing what he wants to do, and that's surviving the rounds and letting him know that he's still in the contest, landing a couple of shots. Here we see the action in the third round. Both boys trading there. Arrowsmith just doing a bit of clowning around on the ropes, just trying to get into Chowder's head. But, yeah, good action in that round. But now, yeah, Thomas Crowder now, we need to see him inject some pace let's see that grandstand finish let people in this venue tonight go away thinking yeah i remember that kid i saw that injection of pace because he's doing enough to win the contest but not doing enough to impress and leave his statement does that make sense absolutely i think what what we what we want to see spencer particularly at this stage is either you know somebody who's got that shot in the locker that they make the journeyman respect it they've got that little bit of power that deters the opponent from coming forward or that relentless work rate uh, we, we've seen seen it in parts from Crowder but not enough of either whether it's that power or that relentless work rate and perhaps you might get that in this final round and it's, it's we've got to remember as well it's uh, off balance again there from Crowder we've got to remember it's last July that was last time out so that's quite a long way off Spencer he was due to fight in October so he's had a long wait sometimes that can play on the back of your mind is the gas in the tank yeah, but I don't, I don't even think it's so much nice the gas in the tank. I think it's more more the ring rust and, and trying to find that timing, trying to find that distance, controlling the space. But Crowder now starting to land that jab. Now he needs to follow up with that. And I want to see an injection, like not just a single shot. Let's go again, phase one, phase two. Let's put the three and four shots together because that's what he needs to do here. And he's caught him with a couple of good shots there, uh, Crowder, but a good response from Arrow Smith as well. So... Just stepping things up perhaps in this final round, Crowder is the, he lands that backhand and the crowd instantly getting behind him. That's letting him know that's exactly what they want to see. Nice defensive work from Crowder, comes back with a lead hand hook as well. It's good work from him, he's edging in with his feet now, trying to close Arrowsmith down. Takes a couple to the body but comes back with a backhand of his own. Yeah, good work here from Crowder, just trying to pick it up, that grandstand finish that I was talking about, he's just put an injection of pace in there and looks better for doing that, Arrowsmith still trying to draw him in, trying to set the traps, 
He knows what he's doing. He just wants to hear that final bell and come out unscathed so he can fight again next week. That's the real backbone of British fight boxing. These sort of fighters like Arrow Smith, very charismatic guys, and he's doing a good job here. But Crowder looking for that finish. This is where he needs to get inside, take that step, step out with a back foot and just let those shots go. Create the space, be creative. Less than a minute to go in this fourth and final round then. Overall, decent performance from Crowder as he steps forward again. Just falls short with that backhand as Arrowsmith just rolls underneath it. Steps straight back to him again. He's, he's commanded the centre ring, Spencer, throughout Crowder. Oh, lovely backhand. He's caught Arrowsmith there. Feels he's in trouble. Arrowsmith does the right thing by grabbing on just to slow things down, take the sting out of it. But that was a good backhand from Crowder. He hurt Arrowsmith with that one. He yep. managed to hang on and ride the storm. Final few seconds in this fourth round as Crowder comes marauding forward again. Good shots here. He knew he got through with that one. Arrowsmith just holding on now, making it messy, making it scrappy. He won't want to take any more of those as he tucks up tight and a nice finish to that one from Crowder Spencer. Yep, brilliant shot there. All started with a right hand and slanted around the back of the ear and Crowder sensed that he'd hurt Arrowsmith. Arrowsmith started to fall up fall apart a little bit he went to grab him and Crowder done the right thing jumped on him and that was a great finish that was the finish we was talking about that was the finish that he needed there where he goes in there with a solid journeyman that rarely gets stopped and he made a statement that was a great finish to the contest there something that was needed by Thomas Crowder and showed us that he's actually got that injection of pace in there yeah, absolutely. He'll be pleased, I'm sure, with that finish. Uh, Thomas Crowder to that round. He found his way through with that backhand. So sometimes those are the ones that can make the difference. If it is at all a close contest, those big shots towards the end uh, can sway things for you. So we're going to go to uh, think both fighters making the way to the referee now as we get the final uh, and official announcement from our MC, Robert Blundell. Ladies and gentlemen, can we please have a big round After four rounds, we go to our referee, Howard Foster's scorecard, which means 39 points to 37 in favour of your winner, still undefeated! Obviously their, uh, their response, very pleased with that one. And he'll, we'll speak to him ringside in just a moment, Spencer, but what, what did you make of that? How pleased do you think he will be with that performance? Yeah, listen, Stace, it's all about, like I say, it's the development stage right now, and it's about learning, going in with different styles, fighting these journeymen. Let's take a look at some of the action in that fourth and final round. And we see Crowder stalking forward. He's looking for the shot. You can see it there, body shot going in. But he's just waiting for the opening. Arrowsmith clowning around, left hand too low. There we see the uppercut. Let's see if we can take a look from another angle here. Jab goes in well there from Crowder. Arrowsmith moving around, body shot again. And there just fell short with that right hand, but there was a right hand that landed just around the back of the back of the ear and that really does affect the senses and the balance and he sensed that and went for it so yeah good performance there there we saw the shot going in good performance from Crowder and he'll go away he'll learn from that he'll go back to the gym he stays undefeated he stays undefeated and um, yeah very 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 solid so I think Stacey is now with our winner tonight Tom Crowder over to you Stace Well, Thomas, uh, tell me first of all, what did you, how did you feel? It's last July since your last fought. How are you feeling going into this one? I felt well, fresh. It felt like it was only last week, to be honest, because I've been in gym, never stepped out of gym. So it's just like another day in gym, really. You were due to fight in October, so sometimes that can be difficult, changing your training. You have a little bit of a setback and a longer wait. What did you make of your performance tonight? I thought rounds one, to, one two and four were great. Number three were a bit, I let him put pressure on too much. They didn't give enough back, but other than that, it was a good performance, really. But a lot to learn from still. 
He said that you wanted to move up to six rounders this year. Are you happy to move up to six rounds after this tonight? What's the plan? Yeah, definitely. I've got to move up at some point and there's no point waiting. I train eight to ten rounds in gym, so there's no, no problem with six. And really important for fighters like you to have the opportunity to get in there tonight on Fight Zone, on Talk Sport. I met your family on the way, your grandparents and your girlfriend on the way in. Uh, you've got great support behind you. How important is that support and opportunities like this at this stage of your career? The support is massive because ultimately if we don't have the support, it just doesn't happen. So having everyone there and you can hear them when you're walking in. Not so much when you're in there, but it's nice when you get out and everyone's happy and over the moon. Well, congratulations. We look forward to seeing you in action again and well done. contest crowd up dominating that one one all four rounds for Arrowsmith as expected give him a good test yeah certainly did then uh, as he was he was just saying there uh, Spencer that you know it's he it didn't really put him off that much not fighting on October as planned and said he didn't really feel like he'd been out of the ring that long which you know as we were saying sometimes it can just be playing in the back of your mind can't it if you haven't fought in a while but didn't seem to trouble him too much and he was really pleased to get those rounds under his belt right what a great start that's got us off to we've got Mason Dynamite Dickinson up next against Jordan Granham let's go for the official introductions for your MC for this evening Robert Blundell ladies and gentlemen we are now going to check on with our next contest where we have four rounds of action in the super welterweight division please welcome our first boxer making their way to the red corner from London Jordan the brown eagle Well, here he comes, Jordan Grannon, the Brown Eagle, hailing from Islington, London. Vastly experienced journeyman. He's only been stopped three times in his 149 contests. He can be slick and tricky at times, should make for a good opponent for Dickinson this evening. He always provides a good test and a good show. So we'll be looking forward to seeing him in action as the crowd awaits the home fighter, Mason Dickinson. Yeah, Granite. I'm the one who caught year top one to six. One man I never need, no accomplice. And ladies and gentlemen, please welcome his opponent making his way to the blue corner. From Sheffield, Mason Dynamite Dickinson. Well, he doesn't disappoint with his ring walk attire. He always wears his mask, does Mason Dynamite Dickinson. He has fond memories, Spencer, of rollerblading here in this very venue as a young man. But tonight, it's all business as he looks to go 4-0 in front of his home crowd. Yeah, crazy how those memories as a young child roller skating here. Now he's boxing here and trying to achieve the heights in the boxing ring. And... Um, I'm beating as a professional, this is going to be good. Mr. Dennis Hobson for Fight Academy, live on Talk Sport and Fight Zone proudly presents four rounds of boxing in the Super Middleweight Division. Our timekeeper at the belt for this contest is Pete Humphrey, and our referee in charge, scoring the action, star referee Michael Alexander. Sheffield, that is our officials. It is now time to introduce our boxers. Please welcome first and boxing out of the red corner. Wearing the red shorts with the black trim. On the scales, he weighed in 11 stone, 6 pounds and 1 ounce. This evening, he is taking part in his 150th professional contest. From London, the Brown Eagle, George. Opponent facing him across the ring and boxing out of the blue. 
blue corner. With the blue shorts trimmed with white and black. On the scales, he also weighed in 11 stone, 6 pounds and 1 ounce. He comes to the ring with a perfect undefeated professional record. Three wins from three contests. Both boxers taking their final instructions from the referee and a really enthusiastic reception for the home fighter Mason Dynamite Dixon, a 23-year-old from Sheffield fighting in his hometown. He's fighting in the blue shorts out of the blue corner. Jordan Granham, helpfully, fighting in red shorts out of the red corner. And I have to say, Spencer, Jordan Granham, as I've just mentioned to him, in a very snazzy pair of boxing boots. Yep, I know you've got your eye on those boxing boots, Stace. I'm not sure if you're in the same size or not, and if they are too big for you, I'm sure you can shove a little bit of tissue down the front of them or something, but quite nice, isn't he? They've got his name on him. <laughs> he's, he's gone big time now as uh, Granham, but he's a, he's a much uh, respected, very well respected journeyman. Only been stopped three times in his 149 bouts, the Brown Eagle, so He's a, a very worthy opponent and it'll be a, a good test this for, for Dickinson tonight, Spencer. Absolutely. Listen, Granon knows his way around the ring. He knows how to survive. Like I say, he's the backbone of the sport. Like Arrowsmith in the first contest, Granon comes here and he'll make his opponent think. He'll make him work. And this is all about, you know, Dickinson, you know, who's 3-0 as a professional. He'll be looking to impress here as well. He'll be looking to do what many people haven't done and that is to stop Granon. But how do you do that? You've got to be creative. You've got to create the openings you've got to look for the openings be patient and then take the opportunity let's see if he can do that but Granham he knows his way around the ring that's for sure he does and it's really interesting when you arrive here early and you go into both dressing rooms of course further down the card there'll be some 50 50s but when it's uh, the away fighters or the journeymen as, as they're called in boxing it's a very relaxed atmosphere they don't expend any energy which is the opposite sometimes polar opposite to the home fighters corner of all that pent-up nervous energy because they know they want to put on a big performance for the crowd and he's met with a great reception here Dickinson and he will want to put on a good performance for his supporters in here tonight in Sheffield yeah he's just looking to wait for that opportunity right now he's showing good patience in that working well behind the jab showing Granham some respect which he should be doing but I just want to see him now, just trying to be a little bit more creative, fake the jab downstairs, fake the jab out upstairs. Let's see if you can create some openings, look for those, because Granham is a tough old cookie who will block shots that are predictable all the time. He fought two weeks ago, Granham, in a four-rounder, and he's had two wins on points this year, this being his seventh outing of 2024. And Last year faced British and Commonwealth super middleweight champion Zach Kelly. Um, it was a fourth round uh, KO at York Hall, but that just says everything, doesn't it? He's, he's been in with very, you know, sort of very renowned fighters, Spencer, and, and so it's, uh, again, this is exactly what Dickinson will want at this stage, because he will ask questions of Mason. Absolutely. Listen, Graham is one of those guys that only gets stopped by the best, you know, so it gives you a great idea of where opponents are at like where, where someone like Dickinson's at like at what sort of level what sort of stage of his career but good opening start there from Dickinson who sort of dominated that first round worked well he's showing good patience just working behind the jab Granham was doing what he does best just staying out of distance blocking covering up giving the occasional jab back just to say look son I'm still here respect what I'm doing but yeah, good confidence start from Dickinson and he'll be glad to get that round under his belt. Scheduled for four threes this one and Dickinson had a decent amateur career. He medalled at various box cups. He's been boxing since the age uh, of 11. I saw him actually against Robbie Chapman at Bramall Lane last February. He boxed in Malta as it happens last July and said that was a really good experience but went on to add that there's nothing like a home crowd. And, He's the type of character that will thrive in front of that home crowd. And you just feel that first round, 
was perhaps a feeling out round and showing respect to who he knows is an experienced and savvy journeyman. And we might see him go through the gears as this one heats up, Spencer. Yeah, absolutely. Beginning of round two here. And you're right in what you say, Stace. Four rounds are a sprint. First round, take a look at your opponent. But now let's see what you've got. Show us that injection of pace. Show us that creativity that's needed. Show us that you're a little bit different and maybe a prospect that someone should keep their eye on. That's what we need to see. Go through the gears. Go through the levels. Showcase those skills because this is your opportunity. We've got a first round stoppage in July against Sylvester Zieba in Malta last July. He says that he wants to put a show on. He does believe that he's capable of competing at European and world level. And that's why it's important to not just get through these rounds. If you have those lofty ambitions, Spencer, you do need to make a statement. Stace, that's exactly what it is. It's not just about winning these fights, it's about how you do it. You know, so that when the people leave this venue, they remember you, they remember your name, they, you're the one that stands out on the show. It's all about stealing the show, and that's what old Kid Dynamite needs to do here, Dickinson. He needs to do something. Go through those levels, show us what you got now. Good jab there that he landed on Granham, who's very relaxed, economical with his energy. And that's of course down to experience there's nothing much that's going to phase the man from islington very very experienced and the good thing as well is that not only is experienced and good defensively is is capable of stepping two opponents spencer as well which gives them something to think about which again really valuable learning experiences in this phase of development absolutely listen granite doesn't just come to stand in front of his opponent and survive the rounds and keep his hands up he comes with a bit of ambition himself and if he gets given a little bit of confidence it will expose that it will jump on that and that's that's what he does certainly it can be slick it can be tricky but, uh, it can time a shot really nicely at times and change the angles, Jordan Granham. So you're constantly having to concentrate, which Dickinson is having to do. Is he uh, does well there with a nice uppercut followed up with a lead hand to the body. Good work from Dickinson. Yep, works well there. Lovely little shot. He's just being patient. He's trying to draw Granham in. You can see that he's come with a game plan here, whereas Granham's normally used to boxing on the back foot, covering up. Dickinson is actually sitting there waiting for him to leave and he's trying to counter punch that so I understand what he's trying to do here maybe a tactic for over a longer distance six or eight rounds good body shot went in there as well controlling this at the moment Dickinson he comes just edges in and just walks you down Granham but with a very very tight guard what's the best way that Dickinson can get around that because Granham does put pressure on his opponent without even throwing that's what's intelligent how should he be combating that yeah listen Dickinson that's what he needs to do he needs to set the traps he needs to feint to the body throw the hook around the side look for the openings create the openings step around the side that's what I mean these fighters need that adaptability they need to be creative in what they do if you get a solid journeyman like Granham and um, you know, I don't really like calling them journeymen actually because they're good solid fighters who come and fight week in, week out. But you see them, you see now, let's take a look at some of the action in that second round. They see there, Dynamite just looking for the openings. He's trying to be a little bit creative. Now I'd like to see him fainting downstairs, fainting with his feet, which is really important. Not a lot of fighters do that. Try and draw the lead of your opponent and then exploit that jump on it you know and i think execute your game plan that's the most important thing seconds out round three so scheduled for four threes as we enter the third round here and coaches will be looking for what dickinson what adjustments he can make between rounds and it can be difficult to break break uh, journeyman down that that is the way we refer to them and uh, as you say i think it's doesn't get the credit that role deserves quite often because some of them are just exceptional at that real specific art of making it difficult for, for prospects and so we see granham just uh, reach out with a, a long reaching jab which finds its target there dickinson responds with a jab of his own but you know how you expose that stage, how you expose like people like Granham is by like that injection pace, putting the shots together in fours and fives, fainting you your feet, going out, coming again, going through the gears. That's how you break them fighters down, them unpredictability, yeah, but volume of punches. 
Granum will block the one twos, he'll block the one two hook, he'll block the predictable stuff. You need to put the punches in bunches and then go again. Granum's also one of those fighters himself who, who enjoys that steady rhythm, isn't he? He's, he's happy just stepping in forward, but then equally comfortable getting on his bike on the back foot and just popping out shots here and there. So he's a, a really relaxed style and likes to get that rhythm and momentum. And what you're saying, if should Dickinson adopt that, that, that puts you out of that rhythm, doesn't it? Yeah, absolutely. He needs to, that's what I'm saying. He needs that injection of pace. He Takes needs a couple to of the shots there from volume. Granum, though. Good one, two from Granum there, which. Dickinson took both of them pretty well and comes back with a couple of shots to the body himself. Can he go up the gears now though and step to Granham? Yes he does. Double jab and a, a backhand off that but then he takes a step back and allows Granham to take that space and just edge forward. Yeah he's got to be careful though. Granham come back with a good uppercut of his own like I say and Granham has come with a little bit of ambition here. He's stalking forward hands high. He's not just looking to survive these rounds. He's looking to take the fight to Dickinson. Good learning curve this for Dickinson who lands a good right hand of his own over the top again but Granham comes straight back at him. This is heating up nicely here in the third round. Takes another jab from uh, Granham and Dickinson needs to make Granham respect him because he's allowing him just to keep coming forward and he wants to keep him off and he's got to do that Spencer with either a bit of power or work rate because otherwise Granham is going to just keep coming forward. Yep, just starting to grow in confidence here. Granham is stalking forward, maybe not winning the round but he's trying to make a fight of this now and Dynamite Dickinson is being made to answer some questions here. Yes, he's winning the rounds but he's He's having a workout, that's for sure. Just takes a stiff jab from Granham at the end as he gets him up against the ropes and, and goes to work. Yeah, good work there from Dickinson again, but Granham tried to change the pace just a little bit there, tries to Forced the pace a little bit, he tried to break the rhythm really of Dickinson. Dickinson was in control, waiting for the jabs, letting fainting and trying to draw Granham on. But Granham then tried to put an injection of pace in himself just to see what Dickinson could do. It's good so we'd see that he's got that adaptability. Here we see some of the action in that third round and we see Dickinson working behind the jab. There we see him just waiting, trying to draw Granham in, looking for the right hand. That's what he's trying to do, he's just trying to set the traps there. But Granham off the back of that grew in confidence and landed a couple of good shots of his own. We're heading to the fourth and final round and Mason Dynamite Dickinson has said he doesn't tend to pay much attention to his opponents. He says he just focuses on himself and describes it as a typical Sheffield style. He says he likes to remain nice and tidy until it's time to finish and if he gets the opportunity he will do that and wants to remain active uh, this year but for you Spencer were you somebody who'd spent a lot of time looking at opponents or was it a matter of focusing on yourself yeah well, I was I was all about work rate really just trying to create those openings set the trap and like, like mine was all about trying to sort of wear your opponent down do you know what I mean systematically break them down and, and, and draw the life suck the life out of them really take the soul from them and that's pretty much what it was all about especially over this shorter distance I don't believe in too much taking your time just take the fight to them and this is a great opportunity now for Dickinson who's 3-0 at the moment looking to continue that winning streak to go right let's stamp your authority here mate let him know who's the boss put those shots together nice body shot went in there from Dickinson but let's see you follow up with that let's see you go again off the back of that I just saw in the opening stages of this one Granham getting on his bike getting into that rhythm nice relaxed footwork and making Dickinson have to close that distance and uh, Dickinson doing a good job of putting a few combinations together a few moments ago and as Spencer says can he build on that now he wants to put in a a good account of himself in in this final round yep it's all about leaving a memory and you know leaving impression on people dynamite has dominated this one dickinson he's worked well but granham to his credit has made a contest of it he's been in front of him the whole time he's been trying to force the pace as well so it's been a nice little contest dickinson coming and best off off these two good body shot again there from dickinson with the uppercut in as well this is nice work there's granham's answer though good little contest here 
heating up nicely in the fourth round. Smart Granham as well, Spencer. How he, he makes you have to constantly work and concentrate because even though he isn't always throwing, he's always right in front of you, stepping forward with that high guard, just waiting to launch. So you've got to keep him off you. You've got to keep that work rate up. Listen, he knows exactly what he's doing. That's why he's got an impressive record as in he doesn't get stopped a lot yes he loses he most of the contest shape as well listen he only fought two weeks ago like he don't even have to go to the gym this guy's fighting so often that you know if they get stopped then they're basically you're taking their pay away you know you're you're, you're, you're stopping them from being able to work good white hand net from dickinson granham takes that well but yeah these guys fight week in week out so jim's not even a big part of it you know they're fighting fit all the time just approaching the closing stages of this final round then as Granham just falls short with that lead hand. Dickinson unable to capitalise on that. Just see, see the round out. And that's it, the fourth contest there then for, for Dickinson. He is starting to build good support here. As I say, last July was his last time out, so good for him to get the rounds under his belt tonight, Spencer. Yeah, you're right. You know, I think that last time out over in Malta was good international experience for him. He's back on home turf again. He wanted to impress and he did impress. You know, he's in with a tough tough journeyman in Jordan Granham who knows his way around the ring, knows how to survive and also asks some questions of a fighter as well and I think that Dickinson ticks all those boxes. Another win under his belt and another step closer to moving on and fighting over a longer distance but here's somebody good action in that fourth and final round we saw there Dickinson looking for the body shots looking for the openings you see him slipping sliding trying to create the openings Granham yeah. doing a good shot of covering up and coming back with a couple of good shots yeah, of his good own work as well there from Dickinson let's get the official announcement now then from our MC Robert Blundell Yeah, well, referee saw it a bit closer than we did. I thought that Dickinson was doing enough to win those rounds, but you know, Granham come to fight, he was forcing it. The right man won the fight, and maybe it was a lot closer than I saw, but Granham, like I said, he was making a contest of it. He come with some sort of ambition, which was always good. He's always value for money, but Dickinson now stays undefeated, goes 4-0, one of those victories inside the distance but another good learning curve there against a very very solid journeyman in Jordan Granham who we see week in and week out and this is just a general roundup of the contest really and the good work from both of these gentlemen Mason Dickinson and Jordan Granham yeah, good work there from both of them. Decent little contest, that. Good learning curve. For the, the, the winner there in Mason Dickinson. And she's just caught up with Mason at ringside. Over to you, Stace. Mason, how did you feel in there? I mean, it's last July your last four out in Malta which you said you enjoyed but you did say there was nothing like fighting at home you got a great reception in here how did you feel 100% I felt back at home yeah it's been a while but I see that first round to just back to it and I'm glad I'm glad Jordan brought a good fight I, I want someone who wants to try and beat me I don't want these people messing about and he did that but the whole bit paid off again yeah he's a really experienced journeyman Jordan Graham he's only stopped three times in 149 bouts and he does bring something different to a lot of the way fighters he can be slick and evasive how, how did you find it in there against him in particular I feel like I rise to the occasion uh, this pressure it builds me up you know it's an honor to have someone on my resume like Jordan like being honest I said 150 bouts that's a dangerous fighter and he has picked up wins this calendar year so I knew if anything less than my best it wouldn't have been enough but we got the job done
What do you think you're better at, rollerblading in this venue or boxing? I know you've done both. It's been a good 10 years, but yeah, you know, I didn't end up on my arse this time, so <laughs> pardon my language, yeah. And that's always a bonus. Yeah, apologies for the language. Uh, so tell us, uh, what's coming up next then? What's the plan for you for this year? I know that you've got lofty ambitions of title fights. Where are you in that progress on that pathway, do you think? So I'm aware of something that's not something to be rushed, so I'm happy to take my time, but I'm going to go back to the gym. We'll watch the fight back and we'll learn from any mistakes. We'll stay on it in the gym and hopefully we'll be out as soon as possible. And final one, the mask is very unique ring walk attire. What can you tell us about that? To be honest, it's been a dream since I was younger to be a pro boxer and I always thought, how am I going to grab fans' attention and I've been fighting? Yeah, Deontay Wilder, I've been watching them and I thought, do you know what, that brings eyes to it. So if I can do the same, I can have a bit of fun with it and I can bring eyes to the sport as well. And it covers his face up. <laughs> I don't know. Should we let him away with that? I think we will. Listen, the pleasure. Best of luck in your next out. And we can't wait to see you out again. And well done tonight. Thank you. Appreciate it. Well done, mate. Well done. Well done.
brilliant stuff there and uh, I had the pleasure of uh, commentating on uh, a couple of those Craig Derbyshire fights Matt Windle Connor Butler and Tommy Frank were crackers um, so it's great to see him in here with his belt and uh, I'm sure there's far more exciting nights coming up for Craig Dynamite Derbyshire lovely to see him in the arena this evening let's crack on with the action though we've got Dave White Rhino Allen up next against Jake Darnell let's go for the official introductions your MC this evening Robert Blundell the man from Blackpool had a busy 12 months 13 contests last year previously he's fought big Fraser Clark back in 2022 he was stopped in the first round in that one but how much resistance can he put up for Alan Dave Allen please welcome his opponent making his way to the blue court Well, one of boxing's real characters, the White Rhino, said he wanted to reach 30 pro fights like his dad, Dave Allen Sr. And tonight he will achieve that milestone. And what a career it's been so far. Last time out, losing to Fraser Clark on that huge show in Manchester. Tonight makes his comeback in the hope of having more big nights ahead. A big hometown favourite just down the road in Doncaster. Big fan favourite Dave Allen, the White Rhino, and against Jake Nelly Darnell. Mr. Dennis Hobson, Ford Fight Academy, live on Talk Sport and Fight Zone, proudly presents four rounds of boxing in the heavyweight division. Our timekeeper at the bell for this contest is Anthony Rushton, and our referee in charge, scoring the action, star referee Howard Foster. Introducing our first boxer, boxing out of the red corner, wearing the black shorts trimmed with orange. On the scales he weighed in 18 stone and 4 pounds. This evening taking part in his 20th contest as a professional. reception for Dave the White Rhino Alan as I say one of boxing's big characters always very candid and honest in interviews and that's what people love him for the Yorkshireman he really wanted to reach that milestone of 30 Bravo. fights like his dad and his granddad a little further ahead with uh, 31 I believe so he reached that milestone tonight he's got the yellow shorts on fighting out of the blue corner and uh, his opponent for this evening Jake Darnell and Nelly from Blackpool in the fighting out of the red corner in the black and orange shorts and Dave Allen has uh, cited becoming a father of two is a big life changer for him as it will be for most people becoming a parent and of course he's got Betty the name of his daughter on the front of his shorts and George his son who's uh, still really tiny just a few months old and that's given him real impetus and direction in his life which can make a big difference to any sports person Spencer yeah absolutely it's a huge focus and a, and a huge meaning for fighters you know having having young children when they come into your life it definitely changes the dynamic massively and you're doing it for a purpose for a reason 
as Dave Allen is now, and you know, trying to reach those milestones, trying to achieve what his father achieved, his grandfather achieved. I totally understand it. You know, he's been at the highest level, like I say, topping the bills at the O2, boxing the likes of Olympic bronze medalist David Price, and now you find him here boxing, you know, in these small arenas, but just still trying to rekindle that career and trying to reach those heights that he once had. Good start here from Dave Allen. And that's you know, been just a fascinating career for him, Spencer, as well, because he's had the, the highest highs and uh, lows as well. It has really been a, a, an interesting career and he's an interesting character. Here. That big win, of course, at the O2 Arena against Lucas Brown, stopping him in the third round. It was a, a huge, huge night for him, uh, followed by the loss to David Price, as you mentioned. And it's been a bit... Mr. Carter had one fight only in uh, 2020, 21 and 22, and then just two fights in 23, so not massively active. And of course, last year, what ended up being quite a bizarre affair after all the build-up with Fraser Clark, it was the, the low blows and the, it was a little bit messy and didn't do a great deal for either fighter, but it's aged well given that incredible fight that Fraser Clark had last week. And of course, Jake Darnell has faced Fraser Clark as well back in 2022. He was stopped in the first round. So, really interesting uh, stories in the ups and downs and roller coaster of a fighter's career. And Dave Allen epitomizes that. And, and this it is all about getting the rounds in, Spencer, isn't it? After, after that layoff and wanting to rebuild. From here of course it is you know you mentioned some big names that dave's been in with in that roller coaster of a career that he's had himself and um yeah this is all about getting the rounds in here you can see he's just you know just working his way through this first round not taking any chances in control of it controlling the space working well off the jab he's whipped in a couple of left hooks to the body as well but he'll be glad to get this round out of the way dave and sort of try and build on that of course, he has a focus outside of fighting himself, Dave Allen. He trains fighters, he manages fighters. Uh, he has a very uh, popular, that patio of his, where he uh, trains lots of his fighters. It's become a quite a famous patio now. Oh, Stevie <laughs> Levy uh, winning her title through training on that patio. So uh, it's good stuff. It's, it's old school and uh, we like it. He's been out in Tenerife as well, uh, training for this one with Jamie Moore, Nigel Travis, Jack Catterall and the team recently. Of course, Jamie Moore and Nigel Travis were in his corner for that Fraser Clark fight. And so he's been enjoying that as well. That's been part of the build up, getting away, different environment uh, with the team, training and, and getting those rounds and you know that fitness under his belt as well he's had a lot of weight to lose for this absolutely one. he's done really well i think he's dropped two or three stone for this one but you know he comes with a wealth of experience in and outside of the ring and i love what he's doing outside as well managing fighters looking after fighters training fighters and you're right in what you say stays possibly the most famous patio in the country right now absolutely well, he's uh he's come out southpaw now and that's perhaps to mix things up for himself test himself a little bit spencer in a different way yep just trying different things out i don't think that you know if you look at um, darnell's record only two victories out of the 27 contests so and it probably doesn't see darnell as any sort of threat so he's just trying certain things out before he's sort of trying to get the win under his belt and the rounds under his belt as well and that may, that's maybe why you know we're not seeing him really driving those shots in right now yeah, because we know that Dave Allen does possess a, a massive shot. He's, uh, he's deceptively big, Dave Allen. And we've, I've had this conversation with him before about sort of, you know, for a heavyweight, sometimes people don't think he's big. He's deceptively big and his legs are absolutely huge. And that's where he generates a lot of that power from. And when he really gets his full body behind it and rotates that back hip and steps into uh, the backhand shot, he, he, can, he can really hit. Well, he just let a lovely uppercut go there and just draw. Drew Darnell in and just pushed out the jab, whipped in the right uppercut as well. Nice work there from Dave Shea. Good variety of his shots as well. Very unpredictable. He moves the hands all the time. You never quite know where the next shot's coming from, which is quite unusual for a heavyweight. He's got a great vision and he's got a great variety as Dave Allen. Not a great deal coming back from Darnell. So it is about Dave Allen just trying different things and mixing it up, Spencer, here with a nice sharp jab there right down the pipe and a backhand as well it's just mixing his shots up now isn't he and, and as i say there's not a great deal to trouble him from darnell so he's wanting to just go through 
a few different combinations really and mix it up a bit himself, Spencer. Yep, he just sat on a couple of shots there. He just pushed out the right hand to the head, set the trap with the right hand to the head and whipped the left hook under the right elbow there of Darnell so that was nice work and again just looking for the openings now now you see Dave starting to sit on those shots just a little bit more just starting to turn the screw a little bit more in this second round I think if he wanted to step on it and get him out of there I think that's well within his uh, his capability but it is about getting the rounds in at this stage and do you think there's any particular need to, to change the pace? Because there's a big difference in 8, 10, 12 round fights to, to going back down now to 4 threes, which, you know, Dave Allen's last fight, of course, was far more rounds than that, So, which he was training for as well. Would, would you train differently, change the pace? Listen, I understand what Dave Allen's trying to do here. You just feel that there's a golf... You know, in levels here, when you see these two, you're looking at it, Darnell, you know, he's there and he's come and he's just, he's a, a moral victory for Darnell is to survive here. For Dave Allen, he's trying different things out. So maybe he doesn't want to take Darnell out right now. He wants to get those rounds. He wants to get rid of that ring rust. You know, he's going to have ideas where he wants to go this year, Dave Allen, what he wants to achieve, where, you know, what is his, you know, what is his ambition left in the sport right now? And right, I think for boxing someone like Darnell, it's not about going in there and knocking him out, which I probably could predict he could do at any probably given moment if he give it if he wanted to up the up the pace. But I think he's just in there trying out different things, seeing if things work. We saw him switching southpaw and then the little jab whipping in the uppercut as well. And I think he's just having a bit of fun in there and trying certain different things out before he moves back up to that level that he was once at. Yeah, and this sometimes is what it requires that so-called rebuilding process when you've been in those big fights on big shows sometimes it's necessary just to get a couple under your belt and a few rounds under your belt before you start that rebuild process and it's important for Dave Allen to get those rounds under his belt and as Spencer says he could definitely up it here and you know likely finish off Darnell but that's not perhaps on the agenda this evening because he hasn't loaded up with any of his shots, Dave Allen. So he, he is, it's about work rate this and getting the rounds under his belt. And there are some big nights, potentially. I mean, when you look at the heavyweight division, you can suddenly get a call last minute or step in. There's big opportunities now opening up in Saudi. You just don't know, Spencer. Absolutely, Stace. That's what it's all about. And maybe Dave's got his eye on that. Maybe he thinks to himself, you know what? Let me have one more roll of the dice here. I think I can still get up there and get that one big payday. The money in boxing right now is phenomenal. The Saudi investment is unbelievable, you know, and it's mainly for the heavyweights. We see what's going on out in Saudi Arabia at the moment. It's like a Super League. And Dave Allen, in the back of his mind, is probably thinking, I fancy a bit of that. I think I can get myself there. So it's not about just winning here it's about practicing different things trying different things he's got the ring rust off him and then we can see him back in the ring very shortly i think another thing that can be really difficult for somebody like dave allen in a, in this kind of position when you've been on those big shows and you've been in with the likes of david price fraser clark now another olympian to add to his tally that big win against lucas brown it's hard to get opponents, Spencer, because you need those opponents for nights like this to start working your way back up to the big nights because you're not necessarily going to go from one to the other. But he's not in his ascendancy now, so finding opponents who are willing to get in there for the purse available can be really difficult. Listen, and that's what it is, Stace. It's all about the money. It's a business, and I think isn't that, it? Absolutely, and I think that it's all about the money and, and, and opponents when they're boxing Dave Allen are going to be calling for big money. So respect to Darnell here. He's in there. He's come. He's giving it a go. There's levels between these two. Dave Allen in complete control. Whips in a cheeky little uppercut there. Rolls nicely. Body shot goes in as well. And, and it's um, nice work here from Dave Allen as well because obviously we're used to seeing him load up and go for those big overhand rights and, you know, finish people off. We've seen him do that. We know he's capable of that. He would have that in his locker. But tonight we're seeing something different from him. And this is nice, sustained, composed control work. And it is showing us a bit of what's like boxing technically wise in his arsenal Spencer yeah lovely uppercut gone in there from Dave as well just forced the head back of Darnell but yeah you're right Stace what you say there it is all about levels and he's just showing us his skill set as a heavyweight we don't see that much you know heavyweights are all about the big shots setting the trap one shot turns it around knocks his opponent out whatever it is with Davey saying just listen 
I've got a little boxing IQ here. I've got a little bit of something. Switches southpaw again here. Trying things out. Leads with the uppercut. Another dominant round here from Dave Allen. Three rounds down. Three rounds in the bank. And he'll be pleased with that. And I guess if we used uh, an equivalency for, let's say, football, for example, in a, in a match like this where there's different levels, Spencer, you're going to want to score as many goals as you can, but keep a clean sheet. And effectively, that's what Dave Allen's doing here. He's not conceding anything. He's making sure he's neat and tidy. And we're seeing a bit more of what's in his repertoire beyond, you know, just those big heavy shots that we, we've, we've seen him do before. It's good to see that technical ability from him. Absolutely, and he's some of the good action in that third round. You see him, look, showing his patience, picking his shots. There we see the lovely jabs. We've seen a couple of uppercuts whipping in as well there. Lead left uppercut, that was nice as well. Just full star nail to hold, but yep, complete dominance from Dave Allen in that third round. Will we get the grandstand finish? Let's see. Seconds out for your fourth and final round. Well, as we were saying, he really wanted to match his father in terms of having 30 professional fights. He's done that with this fight this evening. He's reached that milestone. It's a big one for him. It's a proud fighting family, the Allens. And I'm, I know he's been doing a, a lot of training with his dad on that very patio, Spencer, which is nice as well to see, you know, that connection as is often the case with lots of families, certainly in mine, where it's a huge part of your life and it's a, it's a strong connection between members of the family and it's nice to see him and his dad training together. Yeah, it really is. Like you say, it's the, you know, it's the ultimate gladiatorial sport, isn't it? It goes back you know, to the Roman days and it's just you do, you know, seeing them working together, training together, Dave trying to achieve those heights, trying to reach the record of his dad, 30 fights and all that. Yep, yeah, I love it. You know, it, it really is good and he's... Um, Dominating this fourth round again here. A little bit of showboating, hands down. Just trying to be... That's the creativity I'm talking about. You know when I say trying to set the traps, show us a little bit of variety, show us a little bit of imagination. That's what Dave Allen's doing right now. Yeah, and the crowd are appreciating it as well and did start his own uh, YouTube channel recently and he did an interview, a discussion with his uh, dad and it was really, really popular. So uh, that was good to see. It'd be interesting to see what his dad makes of this one and we are seeing a lot of the the skill from Dave Allen which you don't always get to see and as I say that the proud the crowd seem to be appreciating that as he uh, doubles up on that jab for Darnell good to get those rounds under the belt because you can train and train and train Spencer but there's nothing like being under the lights and you know he won't be flustered by the build-up for an occasion like tonight because he's been at you know that on these big arenas and so on but still it's an important process getting ready for a fight mentally and in every other aspect and keeping himself fit getting that weight down living the life a little bit better than he's admittedly not done before and so a good performance from Dave Allen where we've seen a little bit of something different from him tonight yep showing us that he's just trying to rekindle that that fight that was once in him and that's what he's doing here low-key fight smaller arena on the undercards you know just looking to get himself back in there finding some sort of rhythm again he's and that's about this in the right way hasn't absolutely he, because if he does go in there and blast him out in the first round he's not getting the rounds under his belt he's not shown us anything different well, what have you achieved and he's done it you know we've seen something different from him here he's he's not taken any shots he's, he's been skillful technically able at times so a good performance under these circumstances from the white rhino Yep, dominated this fourth round as well. Only 15 seconds now left on the clock and it's been another good round from Dave Allen. He's shown us great variety. There goes, slams in the one-two, switch, switches southpaw again. He's been doing that repeatedly through this contest. Another good round in the bank and four good rounds in the bank there from Dave Allen. And let's hope we see him back in the ring very shortly because he can build on that now. He can and fair play to Jake. Nelly Darnell, the man from Blackpool, for getting in there in a fight that lots of fighters do not want to accept when they get that call. And you can see why, because Dave Allen there showing us a few technical abilities in his repertoire. Didn't need to load up and detonate that big backhand, or that lead hand for that matter. We know he can fire in some very, very damaging, brutal shots to the body. But tonight we saw something different, switching stance, picking his shots, Moving his feet, changing the angles. Nice display there from Dave Allen, and I'm sure that's exactly 
the type of rounds that he wanted to get under his belt, hoping to build towards some big, big nights this year. Let's go for the official result for your MC this evening, Robert Blundell. After four rounds, we go to our referee, Howard Foster's scorecard, which reads 40 points to 36 in favour of your winner, Dave Allen. Ladies and please, a big round of applause for Jake. It'll be interesting to hear from him in just a moment and a chat to him inside his plans for this year, but he's made no secret of the fact that he wants to be back in those big fights both for the financial aspect as he says he's put lots into the game he wants to take something back now he's got a young family and that is part of the boxing business spencer yeah it certainly is and um yeah this is a good step a good contest that he's got under his belt there good victory for dave allen just went through the motions you just felt that he could have turned the screw and picked it up whenever he wanted but he didn't want to i think he was just trying different things out onwards and upwards now for Dave Allen and we can expect him now to go into some bigger fights and um, Stacey's just caught up with Dave now at ringside over to you Stace Dave I mean we know what you can do you can detonate that back and he can throw brutal shots to the body it seemed quite evident there. You could have got him out at any time, but you wanted to get the rounds under your belt. And the way you went about it was really impressive. Showed the levels there, your technical capability. Tell us what you were planning for tonight, and, and did it come off as you would have wanted? Well, I'm 32 now, and uh, I've been boxing 16 years. No one, no one thinks I can box, but um, I was national champion. I had a place on the Great Britain boxing team. I was a boxer, and then I got fat and lazy and became tough, but I was never tough. Um, so, I went back with Roger and Gary about a year ago and Roger seen me when I was boxing amateur and he watched the spine and said, you can box? And I said, yeah, I know. So that really gave me the impetus to try and become a boxer again. Um, my weight goes up and down, I'm up and down, but I think I've matured. Even when I box Clark, I still matured. I just weren't in the correct shape and I'm too long out. So. Well, you showed a lot of your repertoire there and what's in your arsenal. Switching stance, nice range, changing angles. This is about getting the rounds under the belt. It's difficult for you to get opponents because you're in a unique position, given the big nights you've been part of and then onto small hole shows. What is the plan now? I know you've made no secret of the fact you want that financial reward for all the years that you've put in. What's the plan for this year? I want to box uh, financially uh, in a position where I can just improve, get fitter, I'm 41 days clean of junk food and fizzy pop and people can laugh at that but some people got addictions to all sorts. I've had some to other stuff but junk food for me has been a big problem so I want to stay healthy, keep getting the weight down and I'd like to win the British title. Uh, whether that's this year or next, I don't mind but uh, that for me today, four rounds low level but I showed that I can box, I can do it for four rounds, I can commit to it. I know with another couple of stone, I can fully fit. I can give people nightmares. Yeah. So um, yeah, I, wanna, I just want to get back to my boxing. It was a really good performance. The crowd definitely appreciated it. And obviously we're hoping to see in some big nights going ahead now in 2024. Well done. Yeah, so it was a big thank you to Roger, Gary, in Tenerife with Jamie Moore and Nige, um, my old man. Got a great team. You've matched him now, 30 fights. That's what you wanted to do. Yeah. And you've reached that milestone. I mean, what does that mean to you tonight to reach that milestone for you and your family? Yeah, it means a lot. My great guns are 31, though. So you're definitely going to see me again. I've got to match him and then beat him. But yeah, I've got a great team. Got that's five people there that I know care about me. You know, and that's five real boxing people as well. Maybe three or four, 500 fights between all of them. So I've just got to listen. Keep getting fit, keep eating clean, and people have been it before, but I'm fully aware now of 32. The Betty and George watching tonight, your little ones. Yeah, they're at home. <laughs> so yeah, your dad will be home soon and uh, and yeah, so just watch the space. I'm not gonna promise nothing, but um I know what I can do and these people know what I can do and we're gonna get the best of me, so uh, we'll see. Well well done on reaching 30, we look forward to number 31. Um, well done. Uh, big thanks on white foot, we look after my phones all night. Thank you very much. Well done. The well, well done.
Well, some of the good action in that contest from Dave Allen. We could see he was trying things out. He can talk as well as he can box, Spencer. <laughs> I've Always honest out in his interviews, isn't he? Unfortunately, I couldn't hear the interview, so you can feed it back well, to me. Well, he was saying it was, uh, his dad obviously had 30 fights. It was his great-granddad, actually, that had 31. So he said he's got to match that to be the top Allen man. Uh, but, yeah, he was saying that that's, you know, this is what it's been about, getting the rounds under. Uh, and as soon as I went over, then he said, I think I boxed well there, didn't I? And he did, and he was saying that people have said over the years he can't box. So I think it was important to him there to show, I can box. Well, listen, that's what we were saying, wasn't we? Like, you're looking at the action on in the contest here when we're looking back on the rounds and you see the variety of punches from Dave. You know, there's good shots going in from to the body and to the head. You know, he's, he's setting those traps, doing the fates, leading with uppercuts. Yeah, it was all there. So definitely showcase the skills that he's got there. Yeah, good work. Let's go on ahead with the action now into our fourth contest of the evening. Adrian King and Andrea Peschke. Ladies and gentlemen, we are now ready to get going with our next contest of the evening. Where we have four rounds of boxing in the heavyweight division. Please welcome our first boxer to the ring making their way. Andrea Thunder Peschke fought in Vienna in January and the Italian will look to give the man in the opposite corner who's 20 years younger a few lessons this evening. Yeah, it's going to be an interesting one this. Adrian King is the man in the opposite Ladies corner. not wasting any time to get into the ring he goes by the alias the next and at just 19 years old his coach former British champion Curtis Woodhouse believes that Adrian King has what it takes to become a heavyweight world champion he's early in that journey made his debut in November he looked to improve and build on Ladies that tonight in Sheffield Just 19 years old, Adrian King, Jamaican born, but he's uh, a Yorkshireman now and uh, made his debut in November. Got a points win as he starts really 
explosively. He's in the red shorts, King fighting out of the blue corner. Peshki in the black shorts fighting out of the red corner. He's wasted no time in setting about his man, Adrian King. Last time out, he fought a man who was uh, 22 stone. There was a huge difference between the two, so he's used to being in with heavier fighters. And Spencer, that was uh, presumably part of the plan, was to get straight to work here and put it on him. And he certainly did that. Uh, Big shots landed already in the opening stages of yep, this first round. Absolutely no thought process here from Adrian King. He's gone out. He's held the centre of the ring and he wants to get an early victory here, you can tell that, he's got good leverage on that right hand, good body shot going in from King there as well and Pesky under immense pressure here in this opening round. Well Curtis Woodhouse, his uh, coach, former British light welterweight champion, has got big hopes and ambitions for the young man. He's, uh, he's really happy with his debut, he believes he's got huge potential, he's been uh, He's been getting around it. He's got really limited amateur experience, Spencer, just three fights. So they know it's been crucial to get him as round as many gyms as possible to get that sparring under his belt. And you can see already between his debut and now the difference those rounds have made. Yeah, absolutely. More control, more full process into what he's doing. Lovely uppercut went in there from King as well. Pesky in trouble here on the ropes. Left hook goes in as well. Body shot as well. And this is good stuff here from King, he's just showing good patience, good variety and that work going around the gyms, picking up that experience Fabio Wardley, the British champion who just had that great fight with Fraser Clark he comes from that sort of background, limited experience on the white collar scene, no even amateur experience, learnt his trade on the job and King looks like he has that sort of ability, definitely. Yeah, lovely work from Adrian King, he, he has had sparring up in Glasgow with uh, the Glasgow Warrior Nick Campbell and last time out as I say he fought someone six stone heavier so he's uh, he's had to make adjustments and I have to mention this jab Spencer because we've got the vantage point from ringside and you can feel every blow and that jab has some power behind it and I know he's an avid fan of Lennox Lewis he watches him a lot and works on it and he's, he's always been impressed by his jab that is a wonderful jab that he's got nice stiff jab yeah, it certainly is. And it setting sets everything up for him. Exactly what I was going to say, setting everything up. And he's working the right up cut off the jab as well, which is a tricky combination to throw that. He's struggling you know. to get his head off the central axis, Pesky, as well, because he's landing that jab every time. He's got the height and reach advantage. He's using that jab so effectively. And you can, he'll be able to feel some of those in his toes, Spencer, because you can feel them from here as he, as he uh, catches Pesky with that that lead hook and I think this is going to be a tough few rounds for the Italian. Well listen, Pesky would do well to see the final belt if the next three rounds are anything to go by. That was a great round there from Adrian King. No feeling out process there. He went straight out, worked behind that jab that you was talking about Stacey. Found the range with that jab. Let's take a look at some of the action. Pesky on the ropes and this was pretty much the story of that first round. Pesky covering up and King trying to expose him and trying yeah, to get through those openings. Well Spencer isn't it, it's, it's deliberate, it's intentional and he's, he's doing really well even when he gets him up against the ropes he doesn't smother his own work, he doesn't fall in, he keeps it at range because he knows that's his, his best attribute isn't it, to keep it at range, there's no need to go in any closer and take that space which is good intelligent ringmanship as well. Absolutely, listen for a fighter, if he's controlling the space, a fighter that controls the space controls the fight. And King uses those attributes to his advantage from what I saw in that opening round. Good right hand, chopping right hand over the top there. Pesky took that well. And this is going to be a tough one, States, for Pesky to get through this one as King slams in another one too. Yeah, certainly be surprised, Spencer, if he uh, hears the final bell here, Pesky, as he takes another big shot the referee will be keeping a very very close eye on this one as another big backhand lands from king he works to the body now nice to see him changing up those shots and going to the body as well as he, he lovely work he really steps in well brings his feet with him for those one twos as well spencer yeah that was a big right oh, hand got in there big and pesky. Right hand, pesky hits the canvas he's doesn't look to be in great shape as the referee counts. He's stumbling to get back to his feet. He's unsteady and the ref makes the right decision, I believe, there, Spencer. And 
a really good finish from Adrian King as he goes back to his corner to Curtis Woodhouse and what a story between these two Curtis Woodhouse met Adrian when he was just 14 years old at school he was asked to mentor a young man that young man was Adrian King he needed support and guidance and goodness me this is what boxing can do for young people given the opportunity it can change their lives listen not just change lives but it gives them hope and there's that right hand that we saw that was the one that done all the damage that long right hand followed by the short chopping right hand that we see there on the ropes and bang there it goes right in took the legs away from pesky referee done a right job the corner to be fair was up on the ring apron he wanted it stopped as well but pesky in desperate trouble there and both guys just having a chat which is great to see yeah, at nice the end to of the see contest Pesky on his feet he seems to be okay but totally agree with what you said there Spencer the initial backhand is what disoriented him and allowed Adrian King then to step in and follow up he as I say just 19 years old and, well, uh, certainly to keep unit, your eye on absolutely you told me about him before you come in and the Curtis Woodhouse story is a great story and I thought you know what that's what people get invested about it is all about the story but yep that was a brilliant win there from Adrian King Curtis Woodhouse said he's a great fighter keep your eye on him it was, it was big talk from Curtis and um, Adrian King backed it up what a victory great performance keep your eye on this kid yeah really impressive again given that he's only had three amateur bouts so he hasn't got a huge amount of experience to draw on for that is uh what he isn't experienced in though is realizing you have to wait for the referee to give the decision i think just about to make it must be eager to chat to me absolutely that's what i was gonna say but he's making his way back to the referee now as we get the official announcement for our mc robert blundell Ladies and gentlemen, can we please have a big round of applause for both of our boxers? Our referee, Michael Alexander, has stopped this contest after 53 seconds of round number two, declaring your winner by TKO. with that performance Spencer and anyone who saw his debut will be impressed furthermore for the fact of the improvements that we saw there between you know in a short space of time and you've got to imagine that all these rounds that he's been doing sparring around different gyms is making a difference absolutely listen what he underlined there is that he's got that natural talent as you said Stace you know he's one of those guys that's not been around the game for too long his mate who was his mentor Curtis Woodhouse not a bad mentor to have by the way is you know guided him into the boxing ring three amateur fights then he goes over to the professional ring and the marked improvement from the debut to the second contest was great he showed great patience there and when he got the opportunity he executed the perfect game plan so very impressive and now Stacey you're over there with Adrian and what's he got to say Adrian, really impressive performance. How did you feel in there? Yeah, I felt, I felt good. I um, felt sharp. I mean, I put, I put in the work, so I knew it was going to be an explosive. I was going to feel explosive, and yeah, I felt good, yeah. It was a blistering start. From the very first few seconds, it looked like it was going to be a tough night for Pesky. But you didn't smother your work. You took your time. You kept it at range. I know that you've had limited amateur experience. You've been going around lots of different gyms. How has that helped you? Because we've seen massive improvements between November and your performance tonight. Yeah, definitely massive improvements. That's improvements in my, in my weight. Um, uh, shout out to the HPT um, for getting me physically fit and... Uh, uh, massive improvements there, definitely uh, sparring these top level people have definitely improved me from November to now and I will, uh, I believe I'll continue, will, I'll continue improving and continue doing my best. And a quick word from you Curtis, of course you've been there and done it, so a great mentor. It's a wonderful story between you two, how you went to mentor this young man and he needed a bit of guidance in life at the time and obviously look at what he's doing now, it shows what incredible things boxing can do for people's lives but you've got real confidence in his ability and where he can go oh absolutely i've, I've told everyone adrian one day will be heavyweight champion of the world i've got no doubts in my mind about it i've never been more certain about anything in my life 
uh, this kid's a special, special talent. But for someone who's done so little, like I said he had two amateur fights, he's, uh, he's been sparring Joseph Parker before the Deontay Wilder fight, and people are saying, you must be mad, you can't take him there. I'm like, trust me, this boy's ready. And today you've just seen a little glimpse of what he's going to become. Well, it's obviously working, gaining that experience. You go by the alias, The Next. Uh, what is next for you? Um, I, I don't know, but hopefully I was... Um, it's up to Curtis, really, but hopefully I was looking to have a fight in the Caribbean. My, 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 my. Dennis Hobson, I know you're always uh, not short of a word or two. What's next for this young man? And what a performance tonight. I can learn a lot from you with a rabbit. Um, Curtis and me have been friends for a long, long, long time. And Curtis always said to me, Den Dennis, he says, I won't come to you unless I've got something special. And I think we've witnessed something a little bit special here tonight. He's raw, there's so much to build on. He's an amazing unit. His story is fantastic. Curtis knows what he's looking at, not just in football, but in the boxing game. He's done, it every he's done everything. He's unique as, an, as a human being himself. So if he thinks something special, I believe him. And without seeing him, I thought, I know I'm going to watch something a bit special. And honestly, I do think... As long as Curtis wants me involved, I will be absolutely thrilled to be involved and I'll work all my bit of magic to get him up there and we will hopefully we're going to win my first ever heavyweight championship of the world with my dear pal Curtis Woodhouse. Well, listen, the, the crowd really enjoyed that one. An exciting prospect. It was great to see you ringside in action. We wish you all the best and very well done tonight. Well done. Well, good to chat to Adrian, the next king there, just 19 years old. And it really is a wonderful story between him and Curtis Woodhouse. He went to mentor him as a 14-year-old. And uh, goodness me, as a 19-year-old, he certainly is a prospect. He put on a really good performance there. And they've got big plans for him this year, as Dennis Hobson said. So keep an eye out for Adrian King. Coming up, bout number five of the evening, we've got Billy the Kid Pickles and Christian Narvaez. Let's go for our official announcements to our MC for this evening, Robert Blundell. Hey. Well, Christian Narvaez is a tough cookie. Nicaraguan, now based in Italy, is a very active fighter. 22 outings last year, four already this year. And his last fight, he became a centurion. Saw him in action at York Hall against Frank Arnold in December. His alias is Elvis, so let's see if he can leave Billy Pickles all shook up. Kid Pickles makes his way to the ring, a big Leeds fan, hence the colours on his shorts, took his first loss last year 
after taking on Lucas Ballingall for the English Super Light title at short notice. Got stopped in the eighth and put it down to having to rapidly lose the weight. But he's had a win since then. He wants the rematch with Ballingall and a good win here tonight could help set that up. Division. Our timekeeper at the bell for this contest is Anthony Rushton, and our referee in charge stopping the contest, star referee Howard Foster. Ladies and gentlemen, that is our officials. It is now time to introduce our boxers. Please welcome first and boxing out of the red corner with the black shorts with white and red. This evening he is taking part in his 100th contest as a professional, originally from Nicaragua, now boxing out of Venice, Italy, Christian Navarez. And ladies and gentlemen, please welcome his opponent facing him across the ring and boxing out of the blue corner. could be in for really interesting six three minute rounds here Spence we've got Billy the Kid Pickles fighting out of the blue corner in the blue white and yellow shorts the Leeds United colours he's a big fan of the club but he's in against a tough cookie fighting out of the red corner in the black white and red shorts Nicaraguan born Christian Navais he became a, a, a centurion in his last fight I saw him fight uh, Hackney's Frank Arnold at your call in December. He's also fought young prospect Sonny Boy Hardy in February. Uh, Southpaw, of course, he is a really, really tough fighter, Spencer. Absolutely. They don't get much tougher, if I'm totally honest. He, he's, um, yeah, record doesn't real, really tell the story. 17 victories, 75 losses with seven draws. But trust me, this kid comes to fight. He is very, very tough, as we see there, switching from South Apox, South, Southport to Orthodox. He's only been stopped twice in those 100 outings as well, and often, like I say, people, when they look into the loss record of away fighters, take something from it. When you look at the amount of times they have or haven't been stopped, that tells another story, and only two stoppages, impressive stuff. Yeah, it really is, and Billy Pickles with only the one KO out of his previous 15 contests 14 of those are victory but only the one KO you would suspect Stace that this one has the writing on the wall that this could go all the distance it certainly could he's uh, 29 years old now Billy the kid Pickles the man from Leeds he's uh, as I say took his first loss last uh, July against Portsmouth Portsmouth's Lucas Ballingall it was for the English title it did take it on short notice and he puts that you know the, the need to take the weight off at short notice he, it's really put down to that round eight stoppage because of course it does drain you but he's had a win since then in november a six rounder against uh, justin menzi in leeds and uh, he, get, he gets good support i saw him fight in sheffield at Bramall lane last february actually and he if he can get anything like Josh Warrington, who hails from Leeds as well, it'll be good. But he has had the backing of Jamie Peacock, a big Leeds Rhinos player. He's been uh, sparring at Batesons and he's done a lot of rounds with Harry Sackbar as well. Hugely talented GB amateur who's uh, preparing uh, for the Olympics. And those kind of things make a big difference, that level of sparring, Spencer. Absolutely, you know, and those amateurs are sharp, they're fast, they do it over a shorter distance. So it always keeps you totally on the ball. A good start here from Pickles. Switching from Orthodox to Southport. 
trying to confuse his opponent, trying to create the openings, trying to go downstairs with the shots as well. As you can see, not a lot of power in his shots, but there's a nice fluidity about the work. He's very unpredictable, just keeps pushing those punches out. Good volume of work as well. And I think that's a great point, Spencer, because as you say, he's, he's not... He's only had one stoppage in 15 and he's in there with a very, very tough fighter who's got that short stature, that sort of stocky build. Yeah. Very, very difficult to, to wobble even, let alone stop. So it is going to be important that Billy Pickles keeps up the work rate and sort of gets the rounds that way this evening. Yeah, I totally agree with that. You know, Pickles will be here. He recognised that, you know, he's going to have to go the distance probably for the 16th time here, but there's some of the good work in the opening round, throwing the jab downstairs, out the southpaw stance, then switching back to orthodox, good work, controlled the space very well. Yeah, he's done good work, Pickles, as well, as you say, hasn't he? He's kept the, the centre, so he's allowed the space behind him and given himself the opportunity to back Nave has up when he's had the chance. Derek Waddell in his corner just giving instruction to Nave as uh, Billy Pickles just takes his final instructions as we look to get the second round underway. He's scheduled for six threes this one. Well, here we go. Beginning of the second round. Good round. Opening round from Pickles. Got into a nice rhythm. Navarez really couldn't get into any sort of rhythm. He was reduced to scraps on the outside, covering up. And a good fast start here from Pickles, putting those combinations together. That's great nice work. work. Yeah, great work rate from Pickles. As we were saying, he's, he won't necessarily rely or expect a stoppage, given that's not something that tends to be in his repertoire. But certainly, we know he's got a good engine. We know he can maintain this pace. And he's set a blistering pace at the opening stages of this second round as he does push Narvaez back up against the ropes and goes to work. Now is will keep Pickles on his toes though because he, he comes wide with those wide swinging shots, doesn't he? And he can catch you off guard if you're not switched on, Spencer. Absolutely. That's where he's dangerous, Navarez. He, he, he works off the ropes, high guard, and then he swings those shots in. Typical South American sort of style where he whips the shots in to the body and head. And you, you've got to be careful of those ones because the shots you don't see are the shots that hurt. Pickles is a totally different style where he throws everything straight down the line puts the combinations together and there's an accumulation of punches, a volume of punches that are effective from Pickles, but with the lack of power. So, a contrasting styles with these two, which makes for an interesting contest. Mixes up his uh, defensive posture as well, does Narvaez, sometimes adopting that Mayweather-esque style with that low lead hand and, and tucking up others. He can switch his stance as well, so he's certainly... Um, bringing his own form of entertainment to this one. It's, it's an intriguing one so far, this, because Pickles having to keep up the work rate consistently, Spencer, throughout this. He what? can't allow himself to take his foot off the gas too much, can he? Because you just feel if Narvaez has, has that little sniff that he can get in here, he will come and have a go. Listen, Stace, you know you've been in there, you understand the game, like, you know, you give your opponent a little inkling, a little sniff, like you say, and they, they you know, they would they would take on that, they would take, they would jump on that, and that, that, that's what he's looking for now, Navarez, he's looking for that, just to slow in the pace, and then he'll try and, you know, try and jump on that, work the body well, work the head well, you know, they try and exploit those, those little fundamental mistakes, if you allow him to, but Pickles so far doing a good job here, keeping it at range, working everything behind the jab, volumes of punches, punching upstairs, downstairs, and keeping Navarez guessing. Well, you know, he has said that he does want, he's got an eye on that rematch with Ballingall Spencer, and this is an important fight to build off the back of the, the win he got in November, that sixth rounder I mentioned before, which was in his home city of Leeds against Justin Menzi, that was a points win also. And that's what he'll be looking to do tonight as well, just to build up those rounds and build back. It's important to get those couple of wins on the back of a loss and perhaps set up that rematch that he wants. Absolutely, you know, he's the confidence builder. I mean, this is some of the action in the second round. The good work from Billy Pickles, just pinned his opponent in the corner. Good volume of punches, he just kept that going. You know, he didn't let him off the hook, and I think Navarez was surprised by that. Showed good movement himself, 
slipping, sliding, missing a lot of the shots, but the pressure from Pickles was very, very effective. Did a good job there as well of, of landing at range and then just taking that little half a step out, Spencer, as well, to allow himself to, to go again. Because sometimes when you sustain the pressure, they just end up being arm shots and they're easy to... They can be read. The opposite fighter can sort of predict what you're going to do. But when you just take that little half step back, might just create that opening, bring you know, bring the guard down a little bit, and to go back in, he, he had a little bit of success there. It was intelligent pressure from him. Absolutely, and a good round start to the round here. Again from Pickles, pinning Navarez in the corner at the start, doubling up on the jab, right hand goes in as well. Good switch of attack to the body as well. Good stuff from Pickles. Referee just having a quick word about Pickles. Uh, Ref not too happy with him shoving the shoulder in there, but touch of gloves and the action resumes. Nothing too troublesome as Pickles gets back on that jab. Yep, and that's exactly what Pickles has got to do here. Is just control that space, keep it at range, work everything long. Don't allow Navarez to get inside. That's where he's affected. That's where he likes to whip over the hooks. Pickles starting to grow in confidence as these rounds are going by as well. You can see that good movement. Again, just getting out of range and making Navarez look very pedestrian at times. Yeah, a lot of fluidity now in his movement. Billy Pickles as he comes in and out of range, picking him off with that jab. Coming in with the one-two. And you can see because he's, he's dropping his guard a little bit as well, Spencer. So that says he's getting that, that rhythm, that fluidity and, as you say, that confidence. Absolutely. And you see this is the first time tonight, actually, we've seen someone controlling the space with their feet. He's fainting. He's trying to draw the lead of Navarez here. Pickles doing a good job, fainting with that front foot. And this is, this is nice boxing. For a boxing purist, they'll really appreciate what Pickles is doing here because he's showing a great boxing IQ. It's interesting in terms of the footwork from Pickles as well because he's quite nimble and comfortable on the back foot. But when he holds his feet and sets himself, Spencer, he does adopt quite a wide stance, doesn't he? Yep, he certainly does, which... In this usually position here it's it's a wide base isn't it yep. from which to launch his attacks from yep and usually when you've got a wide base you're slower at getting away but he's very effective at pulling that front foot out and just getting up again on his toes just whips in the uppercut comes through with a hook again maybe not having that much of an effect on Navarez with these shots but the accumulation of punches will take the, their toll over time yeah the accumulation, as Spencer says, the death by a thousand cuts. Sometimes it's not that one massive wound, it's just pick, picking away. And they all add up like a little uh, buzzsaw almost, Billy Pickles. He's constantly in your face and he doesn't load up with those shots. And sometimes, Spencer, when you can throw a high volume but without a great deal of power, it doesn't sap your energy in the way that it does to load up with shots, does it? So no. you're able to throw a greater volume. Absolutely, and trust me, it doesn't matter how hard those punches are. When there's a volume of them, like, like, like that Pickles is throwing, over time, they start taking their toll. They start marking up, the eyes start puffing up, and it was another it's good round there. It's hard to fight against as well, isn't it? Because you've... You know, if Navarez was in this to, to, to win or to compete, you've got to match that, haven't you? You've got to be matching that level of, of work rate and volume. Yeah. Uh, and then that's what makes it difficult because he's, he's constantly working on the front foot, right in front of him, taking the space. And even though, like I say, it doesn't sap your energy in the way that power shots do, but he's got to match it. But he's done well, Navarez, adapting to this constant, relentless work rate from Billy Pickles. And as you say, not the heaviest shots, but they are constant. Yeah, absolutely effective. And there's some of the good work from Pickles in that round. So let's see how this one goes. Coming out for the fourth. Pickles up nice and early. He's looking nice and fresh. Oozing confidence at the moment, Pickles. Let's see if he can build on it. Round four. Well, past the halfway point now as we enter into the second half of this fight scheduled for six threes as Billy Pickles again doing a great job, Spencer, of just commanding that space, keeping it at the range that benefits him because he, he doesn't want Navarez up close. You feel that's 
Naves his only chance really of getting at Pickles and he's not allowed him into that range once in this fight so far. Absolutely you know and I think footwork is key there stays for that I think that Pickles has done a great job of controlling that space and just being up on his toes. Navarez is one of those fighters that's dangerous with his hands but his feet are very slow you see him walking in and he doesn't close the space he tries to close the space with his, uh, with his fists as opposed to his feet and a good right hand just slammed in there again from Pickles. Good work this. It was a well-timed backhand from Pickles there, and you can see him just waiting, Spencer, for Narvaez to make that little movement forward, and he's walking him onto that backhand. He had great success with that three times in a row just a moment ago, but he's mixing it up, he's showing us uh, what he's capable of here. It's yep. Good work from Pickles. Yeah, keep it nice and tight there, staying nice and composed under pressure as well, Pickles. No panic, setting in, gets through with a good jab as well, up on his toes. This is nice work, this. Done a good job of sustaining this work rate, Pickles, as he just picks him off with that jab. Keeping it at range, a few feints just to keep Narvaez busy. A little bit wild with that backhand, but follows it up with a decent... Straight backhand down the pipe as Narvez just trying to stalk him a little bit, put him under a bit of pressure and stick a jab out of his own, but always in control here, Billy Pickles. Yep, Navarez has got no answer, is he? He's there now, he's trying to force the pace, he's trying to come forward, but the feet are too slow and it's a little bit one-dimensional in what he's doing. Yes, the right hand he's throwing is wild. If it lands here, yeah, it would be effective, but you can see it from the back of the hall. If I'm totally honest, is um Pickles has got this totally under control. Yeah, he's able to get on his bike. Nice fluid movement around the ring and come in and out of range and pick him off at, at will. Not a great deal coming back from Narvaez. He's allowing Pickles that, that luxury, but he's kept up that work rate, which is exactly what you want to see in these fights. He's not given Narvaez an inch to give him a little bit of hope as he... It was a nice combination, all straight shots, straight down the middle, finding their way through the guard of Narvaez there. Yeah, that's what I said, the accumulation of punches, trust me, they take their toll. Forget that he's not a big puncher, <laughs> that one just got you there. Yeah, yeah definitely got a few beads of sweat <laughs> in the face there, lovely. Well, you're lucky it was sweat and nothing else there, Absolutely. I'm totally honest. But, yeah, as they come round there, Stace, I saw a load of sp <laughs> spray of sweat come over this our way, on me. Absolutely, lovely. yeah. But, um, yeah, another good round there from Pickles, Navarez. He just can't work it out. He's, you know, he's a little bit too one-dimensional. Walking forward in straight lines, wild swings. It's and the speed that's killed him as well, isn't it? The it speed is. of the, the footwork and moving in and out of range from Pickles and his hand speed as well. Those two factors, the footwork and the hand speed, is just not being able to live with. Absolutely, and this is some of the action in that fourth round. We see there Navarez with a wild swings around the side, around the top of the head. But look at the composure of Billy Pickles, staying nice and tight, comes out, up on his toes, oozing confidence, goes for a little walk. Great stuff. Now he's not had a great deal of defensive responsibility here, but when he did then, he tucked up nicely. Just absorbed a few of those shots from Navarez and then set his feet and came back with shots of his own so impressive stuff so far from Billy the Kid Pickles the man from Leeds 29 years old as he just takes a few steps around in an arc like shape really difficult for Narvaez to close that distance he just doesn't have the speed of footwork to get close to Pickles no, Pickles dominated this one and he's doing pretty much what he's done in those first four rounds. Keeping it at range, working well behind the jab. Foot movement is key here as well. Moving around the perimeter of the ring, switching southpaw, um, switching from left to right all the time. Occasionally switching southpaw as well. If it's not broke, don't fix it. And for Billy, he's doing everything right at the moment. Yep, not a great deal that he needs to change. He'll want to make sure he doesn't take any shots and he's uh, kept it nice and tidy as he just uses his feet again to get out of range. And that's why he's not had to do a great deal defensively, Spencer, because he's, he's not allowed Narvaez in close enough. He's, he's defended, essentially, 
with his feet. Absolutely, that, that is key. Like, and, and listen, the, the footwork of a fighter, people don't realise, you can have great hands, but feet can get you in trouble and out of trouble. And in Billy, um, Billy Pickle's case, they've got him out of trouble for this one. It's made an, a, a potentially tough fight easy tonight. He's dominated from the opening bell, and he showed why he's at that sort of level. You know, he was unfortunate, you know, when he lost for the English title. But be sure after this victory, he'll be oozing confidence again and looking to get back in the mix. And as is often the case, fighters can take so much more in terms of learnings from losses than they can from the wins. And, and although it was a tough one and, a, you know, he got, he got stopped, it was short notice. He had to have a rapid weight cut, you know, altogether a bit disappointing. He will have taken so much from that fight. Listen, it's a bit of pill to swallow when you lose a fight. But like you say, Stace, sometimes that can be the moulding of a fighter, the making of a fighter. And for Billy Pickles, he seems to have gone back to the drawing board, worked hard and he's come out and he's executing a perfect game plan here. He's making, a, like, like I say, potentially tough fight. Forget the kid's record. If you stand there with Navarez, he makes things hard. He's wild, he's tough. You know, he's that, that, that typical South American type. Stand with him, you're going to have a tough night. Pickles has made this easy. Well, certainly anyone who's seen Navarez before will know that given half the chance... He'll put it on you, especially up close. He'll let those big shots go and give you something to think about. And I think, as Spencer says, we haven't seen that from him tonight purely because Billy Pickles has just not allowed it. He's got his tactics spot on. He's worked well to the instructions and executed, as you say, a perfect game plan for the opponent in front of him. Yep, another dominant round in the bank. Again there, round number five for Billy Pickles. He'd be very pleased, the corner will also be very pleased as well now it's he's just when you're in that stage as well spencer when you want a rematch when as you say a really tough pill to swallow but perhaps he he will believe under different circumstances with a full training camp with full notice making the way in the way he'd want to being basically as best prepared as he can he may well have felt that he could have got the win so he'll really that will be dominate his mind and sometimes you wake up thinking about that fighter and go to bed thinking about that fighter because you want that rematch so badly absolutely listen Stacey if you've left no stone unturned and you've gone through a training camp and you've been beat and you've been can beat convincingly by another fighter then fair play it's easier to accept but if the training camp's not gone according to plan you've had short notice something's not right and you lose a fight where you felt you could have won quite easily you've got to live with that you have to wake up in the morning thinking about it going to bed at night thinking about it even at lunch thinking about it and I think that that's been the case for Billy Pickles so he'll be glad to get this victory under his belt and he'll be looking for that rematch at some point well I'll be speaking to him after this one and find out what his uh, plans are and I think Spencer I can spot Luke Campbell just across there yep uh, what I mean an incredible amateur and professional career that he had great to see fighters like that with those experiences and achievements supporting the fighters and that'll mean a great deal to them as well Stace you know what and this is small hall boxing you know this is going back to the gra grassroots and like you say I went over to speak to Luke and he said what it meant for him it, it's the reminder of him coming back here I mean we've got Roy Jones Jr. in the house. That's right, the Roy Jones Jr. I mean, how insane is that? We're up in Sheffield. In a, what is this, a skating centre? A skating centre? Ice, not ice skating, roller, roller skating, skating centre. Yep. It's like insane, and you go, hold a minute. We've got a guy that goes really down... that Roy Jones Jr., to be fair. <laughs> he goes he down. probably rollerblade it's, fairly it's well. absolutely he's insane. He's just one of those that can probably do anything. Yeah. Not too long since he's had a fight. We'll be talking more about Roy Jones Jr. in a little while, of course, but he has been to the Ingle Gym and they showed him where Prince Naz trained and, and lived and uh, they had a great conversation with him and Brendan Ingle actually and a uh, really interesting story his fighter has uh, James Wilkins, the American coming up what an incredible story going from being homeless uh, to, to fighting and fighting under Hall of Famer the absolute legend that is Roy Jones Jr so yeah, indeed, really, really good to see him here tonight but it's all about Billy Pickles tonight because what a performance he's put in as we reach approach the final minute of this sixth and final round and he's he's really taken care of business an impressive yeah he, tonight he's dominated from the opening bell here billy pickles if it's not broke don't fix it he went out there what's worked for him in the first round has worked for him 
every round since, switching orthodox southpaw, working every behind the jab, constant moving of the feet, not standing still for a second. And Navarez has had a frustrating night, stalking forward, hands high, winging shots over like that, but with no real, no real menace or success. Totally agree. I do think he's been frustrated tonight because he's not had the chance to really let his hands go and have a pop and he does like to do that we've seen him do it we've, we've seen him try here at every opportunity but Billy Pickles has just nullified that and not allowed him to get close enough as again he picks him off his switching stances fighting with a, a great deal of confidence Billy Pickles yeah he is and we're only seconds away now 15 seconds actually of this sixth and final round left in this contest and Pickles will take a lot from it he'll go away and this is the win win the victory that he needed the dominance he needed to move on now and possibly get that rematch that I know that he's craving for nice work as he uh, finishes the fight with the same pace and fast hands that have delighted this crowd here in Sheffield throughout the evening and they really appreciated that performance from Billy Pickles it's quite difficult to get your momentum back after a loss, especially given that it was the first one of his career. There was a title on the line, but that's two wins under his belt now. And that one in impressive fashion against a fighter who has given plenty of fighters a difficult time. But he wasn't able to do that to Billy Pickles tonight. Such was the effectiveness of the way that he stuck to his tactics. And we can see here those shots in volume, Spencer which we saw throughout the night, which kept Navarez's threat at bay. Yeah, absolutely. This was uh, pretty much the story of the whole contest. Pickles on the move, working behind the jab, switching orthodox to southpaw, putting the punches together in bunches, and that was important against someone like Navarez, who was stalking forward, hands held high, looking to get inside, and land one of those big shots. Certainly as well. We can get the official announcement now. Let's go to your MC for this evening. Robert Blundell. Ladies and gentlemen, could we please have a big round of applause for both of our boxers. After six rounds, we go to our referee, Howard Foster's scorecard, which reads 60 points to 54 in favour of your winner. haven't seen Navarez before then they might not know he's given plenty of fighters a troublesome night great performance from Billy Pickles there yeah Navarez is a tough old cookie if you give him the opportunity he will take it and then we're taking a little look at the highlights of this contest and this was pretty much how it went throughout from the opening belt right through to the sixth round Pickles dominating keeping things at range throwing a good variety of Punches as well to body and head at times like this, putting Navarez under extreme pressure. But Navarez, the good old pro that he is, you know, showing good head movement and um, not really getting into any sort of trouble at all. He's teak tough, this kid. We've seen him a number of times before. But that was a dominant, dominant performance there from Pickles. And I think Stacey has just caught up with Billy Pickles at ringside. Over to you, Stace. Billy, we've seen Christian Navarez give plenty of fighters a tough night's work. Yeah, yeah. You made that look easy. Yeah. Um, yeah, I'm happy with my performance, you know. Um, I've had a camp for this, trained well. Um, everything's gone to plan. Uh, Medway. Um, so thanks. Thanks to Pete James, you know, so, uh, it's, it, we've smashed it together, you know what I mean? Uh, it was a really controlled performance, you controlled the distance throughout, managed the fight really well. Your hand speed, your movement, really made it almost impossible for Navias to get close to you. I mean, how difficult has it been coming back from that first loss for the title? You had short notice, you've had a win since then, to get another win under your belt. How difficult has it been coming back from that, or has it been? Like I say, I don't make excuses, you know. Um, I took the fight on short notice and the better man won that on the night, you know. Um, would I look, like to fight him again? 100%. You know? That was my next question. I know you wanted the rematch. Yeah. You know, in hindsight, I'd need a full camp for it, you know. 
Um, he's a good lad, big respect to him. He beat me on the night and um, like I say, I think it'd be a great fight if we both had a camp. We're talking about Lucas Ballingall, of course, who you yeah. fought on short, short notice for the English title. I know that was part of the plan. Two wins under your belt and your really impressive performance. Yeah. Is that the plan then now? Is that what you're thinking about constantly, getting that rematch? Or is there another route that you can yeah. see? So obviously I've got to speak to my manager and stuff like that. Uh, fight Lucas at 10 stone with a full camp, let's do it, you know. Um, if it's for a title, whatever, I don't, I don't know. I just want to be on them big shows now. Um, so let's, let, you know, bring out to me, you know. I know you're a big Leeds fan. How's it been fighting in Sheffield? Uh, it's always good having a, 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 a night out in Sheffield, you know. Um, but you know, no, no matter where we go, the Leeds lot can make some serious noise, and you know it's proved tonight again. You know, um, it's what a night. Well, listen, whether you get the rematch or whatever's next, we wish you the best. Great performance tonight. Well done. Enjoy your night out in Sheffield. It's well earned. Well done. Thank you. Well done. Well done. So, 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 some of the action again from that contest. This is a rare occasion when Navarez got close enough to get off with some shots. But it was a dominant performance from Billy Pickles, who ran out victorious with a performance like this. He kept it long at all times, controlled the range himself getting through with a good right hand it was the accumulation of punches that were slowly wearing Navarez down but yet a very very dominant switching from orthodox to southpaw and um very very impressive stuff Okay, well, I think we're just about ready to get the introduction of the next contest from our MC. Ladies and gentlemen, we are now ready to get going with our next contest, where we have four rounds of action in the cruiser weight division. Please welcome our first boxer making their way to the red corner, originally from Poland. Yeah, well, here we go. Just underway now. Brosco, but we have a change of commentator. And in comes a good old friend of mine, a guy that I worked with for many, many years. Way back when, seems like an eternity ago, Mr. Paul Dempsey. Paul, how are we doing? Much indeed. Thank you very much indeed, Spencer. You can uh, start by giving us all a bit less of the old, but anyway, it's lovely to see you, and it's great to be here, everybody. A very good evening. I know uh, Stacey, who's still part of our broadcast team tonight, has been doing a brilliant job. Delighted to be here, and uh, my thanks right off the top to Dennis Hobson and the Fight Zone team for pulling out all the stops to reunite me with my old friend Spencer Oliver. So looking forward to some really good stuff tonight. Got a terrific crowd here. And I will say the uh, entrance music is top draw both ways. So at 27 years of age, little time to hang around if you are Brendan Needham. And it's a big night for him for this homecoming event here in Sheffield. 
Ladies and gentlemen, Mr. Dennis Hobson for Fight Academy. And Hot Talk Sports and Fight Soul proudly presents four rounds of boxing in the cruiserweight division. Our timekeeper at the bell for this contest is at peace Humphrey. And our referee in charge, scoring the action, star referee Michael Alexander. Ladies and gentlemen, that is our officials. It is now time to introduce our boxers. Introducing first and boxing out of the red corner with the gold shorts trimmed with white and red. On the scales he weighed in 14 stone, 3 pounds and 5 ounces. This evening taking part in his fifth contest as a professional, originally from Poland. Now boxing out of Wakefield, Madison, Matt Boy, Brasco. And ladies and gentlemen, please welcome his opponent facing him across the ring and boxing out of the blue corner. With the blue shorts trimmed with white. On the scales he weighed in. 14 stone, 3 pounds, and 4 ounces. He comes to the ring with a perfect record. Three wins from three contests from right here in Sheffield. So to start with an awful pun for which I'm very famous these days, it will be a nightmare if this goes wrong for Neem in front of his home crowd here in Sheffield. We're making no bones about it, Spencer. This is a designated home victory in the making and it is a chance to make a big impression. And maybe a short night's work would help Needham in that respect. Prosco in his third fight already of 2024, so at least he should be fit to rumble. Yep, he certainly looks fit, but he's not come away with a victory as of yet, as Prosco. And Needham has taken the initiative straight away. He's starting fast here. He looks like he wants to get the job done. He's really loading up with those shots. And there's a fragile look around Prosco here. Need him in the blue and white of Sheffield Wednesday. Massive victory for Sheffield Wednesday. As I can testify, having spent the train journey up from London, their fans are in great form. Some of them have made their way in here. Following on, just around the corner from the main rail station in Sheffield to continue the party atmosphere tonight. But it has to be all business for Needham. I've seen him a couple of times actually, Spent, and I've always thought all the bits and pieces are there, but he's yet to put them together. Yep. And that's why he's had the three victories and maybe not the stoppage at the moment. Like you say, Paul, all he's got to do, you think that, yeah, it's all there and he's just got to put it all together. And that does take time and one day it will just click. And it's been a good start, positive start from Needham here. Working well, very fast start. But he's settled down a little bit now, working behind the jab. He may be a limited novice in terms of technical ability, Prosco, but as expected, he shapes to be fit. He's clearly a very strong man. And he's not come to continue this losing run if he can help it. So he's there to provide a little bit of stern resistance if possible. As you said, Paulie is in tremendous shape. You can see that. Looks after himself very, very well. And what is... Nice little body shot there from Prosco as well. Just a little reminder that he's in this contest. Needham from the centre of the ring, but it's all been at one pace so far from Needham. Yep, started very fast Needham, worked everything, but he's now settled down. It's probably worked against him, if I'm honest. I think that, that constant pressure was more effective. Prosco didn't like that, but you give Prosco a little bit of space and you allow him to grow in confidence just a little bit. And that's what he seems to have done in the second half of this contest. Yes, Needham's doing enough to win the round, but he's allowed Prosco to come back into it. And that's what he had to do, take it away from him again with combinations like that. Last 40 seconds of this opening round, scheduled four-rounder. When he works off the jab, 
Needham seems to have a bit too much for Prosco, but at times he has waited a bit too long, like there for me, in this first round, and that's encouraged Prosco. Yep, totally agree with that, just giving Prosco the space and allowing him to lead off first causes Needham problems. It's a good finish to the round and a finish that Prosco needed, to be fair, because he's been under an immense amount of pressure in that opening round. But I will give him credit, Spencer, he kept on firing back the pole. Yep, he certainly did. He's a proud man, Paul, you can see that, and he's in great shape as well. So he's not just come here for the paycheck. He's some of the action in the opening round. There's the good work, the fast start there from Needham coming forward, and that's where he was most effective, getting off of those shots. And there we see him just piling on the pressure, but that was better work from Prosco. That's when he was given that space. That's when Needham took his foot off the gas. But he quickly tried to turn that around again with another fluster of punches. Good opening round, that entertaining opening round. Needham nicks it on our scorecard. But Prosco said, listen, mate, I'm still in this contest. And if you give me the opportunity, I'll take it. Second out, round two. 37 years of age, apparently, Prosco. Needham, 10 years his younger. But... At 27, only three pro wins. And the one inside the distance would come in very handy indeed. Yep. The pattern starts the same as the first round with Needham on the front foot, dominating the centre of the ring, just looking for the openings, trying to create the openings. You can see him just fainting a little bit there, trying to draw the lead of Prosco. But Prosco not having any of it, he's just taking his time as well. It's a little bit above my station, Spencer, but what I am seeing with Needham, a little bit too much at this stage in his career, is when he's going backwards, he's going back in a straight line, and that's really helping Prosco, encouraging him. But he, he does throw a good left hook, does Needham, and we saw it there. Yep. So, you're right in what you say, Paul. He just gives him that little bit of encouragement, sits on the ropes too long and allows Prosco to get off with the shots, which he shouldn't do, Needham. You don't want to give this guy any sort of encouragement at all because he will grow in confidence. Walking Prosco back to the rope is easier said than done. Yep, looks in great shape, Prosco, that's for sure. Looks a powerful type. Needham again, just holding centre of the ring, just looking to fake that jab, trying to draw the hands of Prosco. Good work there from Needham with his feet, just getting out of distance. But you just like to see Needham step up the pace, wouldn't you? Just like to see him turn the screw a little bit. But we're not seeing that just yet. Yes, he's doing enough to win, but is he doing enough to impress? Well, must have heard me because he's gone for it and a lovely uppercut went in there. And for the first time, Prosco had to grab hold. And now Needham walks his man back right across the ring. He senses that Prosco's beginning to come apart a little bit here. Still needs to be wary, but let's see him work off the jab and wait for the next opening to come along and not e expend unnecessary energy. Absolutely, you're right. Bang on with that, Paul. You just expect now, you just want Needham to build on that flurry. He had Prosco hurt for the first time in the contest. There, good body shot, right hand goes in as well. Just skims the whiskers of Prosco there. Prosco's legs just seem to have stiffened a little bit. The rhythm, the fluidity seems to have left them right now. So over to you, Brendan Needham. You've made it a significant inroad in this second round. And how are you going to get the job done from here? He's thinking about it a little bit just at the moment. And maybe yep. thinking a little bit too much to, yep. get, to get it done in this round, Spencer. Last few seconds now. Yeah, that's exactly it, a, Paul. By a, a flailing right hand, he should have got out of the way of that. No real harm. The power was over the end of the shot, if you like. But he slumps on his stool and uh, doesn't look entirely happy with his work. And I can see why. Prosco's giving a right good go again here. Yep, good round there from Needham, but like you say, like Prosco is giving it a go, he's hanging in there, he's showing us what he is, there's some of the action here in that second round, some good work from Needham, but he couldn't sustain that pressure, you know, you just have to question maybe, is he fit enough, you know, I think that that may be a question 
or maybe something that he needs to go back to the gym and work on now because the reality is when you get a tough guy that stands in front of you, you need to be able to go through the levels, phase one, phase two, be able to turn the screw and you just sense that the nightmare Needham couldn't turn the screw there. He had that first phase, but he couldn't go again in the second phase. In the corner, they're looking for a bit more accuracy from their man. So, so far tonight, we've seen Brendan Needham, little flashes of a good jab, little flashes of a good left uppercut, little flashes of a good left hook, all promising component parts, but we're still looking for the finished engine to come off the production line, and the engine needs to keep going to keep on top of this uh, Martin Prosco, the pole now based in Wakefield. Not too far away. <laughs> no, certainly isn't. And Needham, yeah, looking to impress here. He's brought a good crowd with him, actually. It's really livened up in here now. And um, Needham's looking to impress, and he's shown us glimpses of that. We've seen little glimpses of that, but, you know, you just feel that you just want to see a little bit more go again, you know, show us a little bit of creativity, you know, show us a little bit of imagination, and he think if he could do that, he could get this job done. When he has been under pressure, he hasn't panicked, Prosco, and he's got some really good disciplined habits, hasn't he? For a novice pro, I have to give him a lot of credit for that, Spencer. Yeah, great shout, Paul. That's exactly what it is. It's discipline, you know. He's tough. Look at that. You see him there. You know, what he lacks in technical ability, he makes up for in heart, desire, determination. And he's actually having success here in the third round. See, somebody somewhere, probably in the amateurs, has taught him some good basics. And he's well, relying on that. The basics, the fundamentals are what carry you through. You know, you can look at some great fighters that went all the way to the top, you know, just with the basics and the discipline that gets you over the line. And I tell you what, there's a turning in the tide a little bit here because Prosco is starting to fancy this. And to that, I'll only add, if we had punch stats for the whole fight tonight, to this point, I don't think there'd be much in it either way. Need him with the better quality early. But this is not a done deal just yet, is it? Totally agree with that. You know, Prosco's come right back into it in this round. With one minute left of this third round, and it's been all Prosco. And you just sense that Needham has hit a brick wall. He talks about, you know, his fitness. We questioned his fitness. And that is starting to become a reality here. I think he's struggling a bit here, Needham. Needs a bit better, certainly. This round has slipped away from him for me. Oh, definitely slips away from him. You can see him trying to turn it around, trying to do something different. But I think he's blown a little gasket here, Paul. I think he's struggling a little bit. No starting to bleed now. And Prosco is starting to ooze confidence. He's putting the shots together. Big left hook goes in from the nightmare. But no effect from Prosco. Prosco just can't miss him with the right hand all through this round. Yeah. He, even there, even the little backhander at the end of it. I think we're over the time, incidentally. We're very close to it. Lead him with a late flourish, but he's got to go back there and regroup. And it's John Fuchs in the corner, isn't it? Just recognising John. Yeah. And I know John well enough to know he won't be very happy with this. Well, That's you the just. Truth of it. Paul, you just saw Needham slump on the in the corner there, you know, he's really struggling. I said there, I just called it, he, he looks like he's blown a gasket, and that's exactly what he does. The corner have got to do a great job here of gearing him up, because I've got him two rounds to one up. But let's take a look at this third round, and the good work from Prosco, I think he just sensed that Needham was tiring, and he capitalised on that. He jumped on it, put the combinations together, and started oozing confidence. Now... The pole from Wakefield is really going to fancy this in his fourth round. Needham has to do something special or pull. He could be in trouble and in danger of losing this contest. This is not the place or time to do it here in Sheffield, his hometown, in front of his own crowd. Might be in Needham for one of the harder rounds in his short pro career now because Prosco is still looking fit, fresh and strong. And just senses the possibility, Spencer, of a big upset, I think. Yep, he'll be oozing confidence in there right now, Prosco. The corner would have pumped him up. I can see them shouting, they're fancying it. Needham knows that he had a bad round. He got caught on the way in there as well. He's got to keep with a game plan, though, Needham. He can't get reckless here. Because as you pointed out, Paul, Prosco is a powerful-looking man. And there's probably a little bit of weight behind those shots.
not had the accuracy tonight, Needham, that we would have expected or hoped for. I think that's only fair comment. Yeah, maybe have to question the training that he's put in, or, you know, he's come here underestimated. His opponent, who comes with a record, still searching for his first win. Well, four fights know, and four losses. As you know, Spencer, there's a myriad, million number of reasons why it goes wrong for a fighter. Some we'll never know about on many occasions, but what doesn't go away is the L. And he needs to avoid that, Needham, by keeping the pace up and finding the accuracy, which honestly has eluded him after the second round. That's more like it. That yeah. is more like it. That was the combination needed, but look at the combination back from Proskat. Big left hook goes in and Pros Prosto has to grab hold there. Needham really feeling the pace here. Paul, this is good action in this fourth round. Both guys sense that this could be close. Needham clearly senses it because now he tries to press Prosko. But can, does he have the fitness? Does he have the tank tonight, Needham? to maintain it and I'm not certain that he does yeah great call that need him there you can see he has the technical ability he has the boxing IQ but the stamina is the thing that's let him down tonight the conditioning and if he does get away with this and he does get through with it this will be the wake up call he needs get back to the gym son and put the graft in this is the only game that cheats get found out Good old four round of this tonight here in Sheffield at Cruiserweight. Yep, Needham just trying for that Grand Sam's finish. Coming up to 30 seconds now on the clock and it's Prosto, Prosco that's now starting to look like he's feeling the pace a little bit here. That little barrage that Needham landed may seem to have taken a bit out of him. Body shots in as well. Prosco looking unsteady here. He was caught high on the temple by a swinging left, wide left hook. I think he's going to get away with that. Probably deserves, well certainly deserves to hear the closing bell even if it's not to be his night. And again, it's just slightly off the target from Needham, isn't it? There's been a lot of that tonight from Needham. Nearly moments in the fight. Prosco takes a bow and deserves to do so. He was very good indeed. A really game opponent. Yeah, very close contest that one. I've got to say, probably leaning towards Needham to nick it. But that's the problem when you have these four rounders. The problem is that they're very difficult to separate when you get those close rounds. A fight can be won and lost. And I think that that was down to possibly that last round there. Needham had a very start, positive start to the contest, but blew a gasket very early. Clearly the conditioning that he should, he was not in the condition that he should be in. Dennis Hobson gets in the ring, the promoter of tonight's show, and he's a nervous sort of look on his face. Let's take a look at some of the action in that fourth and final round. We see Needham pushing forward, trying to work, trying to force it, landing some good uppercuts and crosses. Frosco took those shots well and look at him come back great action there in that fourth and final round both guys seem very pleased with himself the referee now calling him to the middle so the referee the excellent Michael Alexander has adjudicated upon it they're getting a terrific hand here in the hall Really good four-rounder. Let's go to Robert Blundell, our MC, for the Ladies decision. And gentlemen, please have a big round of applause for both of our boxers. Really good. Yeah. After four rounds, we go to our referee, Michael Alexander's scorecard, which means 38 points to 38. We have a draw. Ladies and gentlemen, please, a big round of applause. I mentioned tonight, Spencer, that someone somewhere has been giving Prosco some good basics, lessons in boxing. That was clear. I'm not sure with every possible respect to him whether he's done the basics of the English language because I don't know that he understood very well that he is actually a draw. And when he found out, then he started to smile. And yeah. he deserves to because he would really played his part tonight, didn't he? Absolutely, yeah. I think that, yeah, listen, he played his part there and he got away with a draw. Look, he could have gone. If, if, if there was a winner in the contest, you may have gone for Needham. Some of the action. 
You know, these are the highlights of the contest. Needham started well. Story of two halves, really. A fight of two halves. Needham started well. Prosco finished well. The final round was very, very tough. Look, you can accept the draw. I thought Needham might have nicked it, but I can accept the draw. I can understand the draw. I think that Prosco played his part in a tremendous contest. Some hard lessons learned tonight by Brendan Needham, and that's the truth of it. The toolkit is good, but the tools were not sharp enough, and it has to come of good, sound basics, which certainly include better conditioning than we've seen tonight. There's no getting away from that. Yeah, that's what I think let Needham down, wasn't it? We could see that he was the better boxer of the two. The fundamentals were there, the foundations were there, everything was there, the shot selection, but he just couldn't execute it because he never had the engine. That's the truth of it, and I think that, you know, talent doesn't work when you don't put the hard work in. And I think that that's what we saw there. The great thing for Prosco's point of view, of course, Freddie, he's had three fights before tonight, this year, and now he's going to be uh, having a full dance card for another month or two, because he's a good opponent, isn't he? And Absolutely. He's around to talented youngsters. Absolutely, listen, he's, he's, he's very fan-friendly, he's TV-friendly. He works hard and he'll get the opportunities off the back of that performance. You know, he's just took an unbeaten fighter, to, to, took him to a draw. So he says, forget my record, forget that I'm 0 and 4, that's four fights, four losses. I'm actually here to fight and if you don't show me respect, this is what I can do. The good highlights reel. Yeah, it really was a, a tough contest, wasn't it? And this was a, a fight really of two halves. Needham tried to push it, tried to force the stoppage pull, but Roscoe, Roscoe, sorry, proved so stubborn, so tough. One question for you as an ex-star fighter yourself, Spencer. Uh, what I would ask you is this, you know, a fight at that pace, not top draw pace or anything like it in, in honesty clearly four round fight does it give john fuchs in this case with needham the chance to take the tape away and really examine it when things are happening a bit more slowly you can actually determine where it's fallen apart a little bit is that fair absolutely and i think that i i, I can sort of tell where it's fallen apart i know where it's fallen apart and it's fallen apart because he's clearly left a stone unturned when a fighter leaves no you stone mean literally unturned, you literally, mean literally, a stone. literally literally a stone like you can see that the conditioning wasn't there right so listen when you, you start doubting yourself when you miss that run or you miss that sparring session you think you can get away with it oh let me look at my opponent's record only prosco oh he's 0 and 4 that's all right i won't get up this morning Morning. I don't need to go. Well, we are, we are venturing into the, the realms of speculation in that. Absolutely. Respect. However, however, it, the evidence is, as you rightly said, is always borne out on the night of the fight. And there are always reasons why people will accept it going wrong. And uh, of course, the higher you go, one of the reasons why some of the top guys are or girls are very much at the top of the game is because they refuse to let that come in. Absolutely, and what I was trying to highlight there was that, you know, I think that Needham will go back and he'll take a look at that and he'll be frustrated with himself because you can see that the talent's there, you know, he's got it in the locker, he's got the fundamentals, the foundations, the grit, the heart, everything's there, he just never had the engine and there's a reason for that. Terrific, Spencer. Thank you very much indeed. It's a pot boiler for sure here in Sheffield tonight. Not the outcome for the home crowd that they were looking for as Brendan Needham draws, but must draw on the lessons of tonight. Still unbeaten, of course. On we go. Back to Robert Blundell. Ladies and gentlemen, our next contest is a special 10-round Super Featherweight International Attraction.
gentlemen. Please welcome his opponent making his way to the blue corner. Accompanied by his trainer, four weight world champion Roy Jones Jr. from New York, United States of America, James Crunch Time Wilkins. Mr. Dennis Hobson, Four Fight Academy, live on Talk Sports and Fight Zone. Proudly presents 10 rounds of boxing in this international super featherweight special attraction. Our timekeeper at the belt for this contest is Anthony Rushton, and our referee in charge, scoring the action, Reese Carter. Ladies and gentlemen, that is our officials. It is now time to introduce our boxers. Introducing first and boxing out at the red well. corner, like wearing the black shorts with white trim. On the scales, he weighed in at nine stone and three pounds. This evening, taking part in his 59th contest as a professional, originally from Nicaragua. Now boxing out of Girona, Spain, no, Orion, Mariana! No. And ladies and gentlemen, please welcome his opponent facing him across the ring and boxing out of the blue corner. When he stands with his head trainer, Roy Jones Jr. Wearing the green, white, red shorts trimmed with black. On the scales he weighed in 9 stone, 2 pounds and 4 ounces. He comes to the ring with a record of 11 wins and 2 defeats. 6 big wins by way of knockout from New York, United States of America, James Crunchtime Wilkins! So final instructions from the referee, Reese Carter. And an intriguing international super featherweight feature event here tonight in Sheffield. No known local connections for either. And the opponent, Brian Morena, but all eyes on James Wilkins. Originally from Brooklyn, New York, now based in Dallas, Texas, but the nod in the direction of Mexico, a country which has produced one or two decent super featherweights. Let's be very clear about that. <laughs> it oh, certainly has. Over the last half a century or more. And that is because he has been spending time in Mexico. But all of it under the watchful eye of the all-time great Roy Jones Jr., who of course creates huge buzz wherever he goes and he's a guest of honor here in Sheffield tonight so Wilkins I've heard I have actually spoken to Roy Spencer about this kid he believes he's a wasted talent and Roy is saying I've just about got time at 28 to get him on the right road yep I know that he's got hopes for him Roy I saw them both in the hotel earlier on and like you say Wilkins comes with a record of 11 victories two defeats and six of those victories coming by the way of KO but he should not 
of lost those a kid of disability voices to me should be an undefeated fighter he should be challenging for big things but he hasn't for now he feels Roy yeah he said that he can get it he's caught it in time and he believes that he can turn this kid around so let's see a nice solid start here from Wilkins just taking the center of the ring and rightly just taking his time taking a look at his opponent showing good experience good composure what I think is terrific tonight is that they've told him this is 10 rounds. That's to say it's got to be at a high level, at a good pace. You're not going to get any soft ones. He had one gentle introduction. There were some license issues which had to be addressed as well, incidentally, which meant that he was put into a four-rounder in uh, Costa Rica in mid-March just to make sure he was ready for this big job in Sheffield. But he is deemed to be an 8, 10 or 12-round fighter. So that is what he's got to do from now on in. And Morena knows how to stick around. We know that he doesn't win many but he knows how to, in most cases, bring talented fighters in the UK over a distance. Yeah, we've seen Moreno on a number of occasions and he is tough, teak tough actually, and he will try and force the fight. Forget that he's got 15 victories, 42 losses. Forget that. If you give this kid an opportunity, he will take it. He comes to win. He's still got ambition. You know, he loves that phone ringing. He's very, very active indeed. And this is a good test here for James Wilkins. And we'll find out a little bit more about Wilkins and just how good he is. Not exactly fleet-footed, Myrena, but to emphasise the point that he does like to stick around in all those defeats, 42 in total on the slate, only three by stoppage. Wilkins is certainly looking the part in this first round. Slick, moves nicely. Yeah, right. couldn't... Wide stance, sorry Sven, just suggesting that he has got a bit of a dig about him and he has actually stopped half of the opponents that he's faced to this point. Interesting yep. opener, Spencer. Absolutely, yep. What a good start there from Wilkins, just took his time, showed good composure there, didn't that make any silly mistakes. He's heard about Miranda and just how good he is, how dangerous he can be. So Wilkins rightly just controlling it, taking a look like you say, Paul, it's over a 10 round distance. Expect Wilkins to start stepping in with his shots, turning the screw at some point. Just getting some good words of advice there from the one and only Mr. Roy Jones Jr. Who better to have in your corner than him? I mean, this guy, if anybody never saw Roy Fox, Roy, you want to go back and watch him on YouTube? He was a phenomenon back in the day. All time great. Round two. And a wonderful human being, incidentally. Uh, uh, the privilege of spending a bit of time in his company recently. Part of the Fight Zone team going forward, all being well, Roy Jones. But Morena just edging Wilkins back to the neutral corner early in this second round. Yeah, Wilkins again starting the round, second round the way that he started the first round, trebling up the jab, doubling up the jab, keeping Morena guessing. Just to throw back to our previous contest, Brendan Needham could be doing with watching this, couldn't he, tonight? Absolutely, yeah. Absolutely, you know, two guys that have come in great condition. Left no stone unturned, incidentally. Indeed. And that double treble jab, particularly. Anyway, there you go. Anyway, on with business. He took all of those very well indeed, Moreno. And he doesn't panic, does he, if the wick gets turned up by the opponent. He just goes about his business, stays cool, keeps the guard high, makes the target as small as possible, and tucks that chin in to the left shoulder. Yeah, it's well spotted. That just rolls the shoulder, doesn't he? He's defensively very good, Moreno. He knows his, he knows his stuff. And like I say, look, he's got ambition. He's coming forward. He's trying to make a fight of this, and he's making James Wilkins think here. Wilkins using a lot on the ring, losing a lot of energy in there as well. Moreno starting to fancy this a little bit because he's starting to apply the pressure, Paul. So if Moreno was here to do the losing that has got lost in translation because he's making this quite competitive at least early on we shall see how it transpires over the longer trip 10 rounds tonight but 
You're dead right, Spencer. He knows his job. He knows his way around. And the thing I like about him, never any panic. No, he looks very composed, doesn't he? Wilkins struggling to find his range at the moment, just falling short with that jab, double jab, treble jab. He's a little bit wild with the hooks as well. Just needs to find the range at the moment. He's not settled down and not really landed any clear sort of punches. He's l using a lot of the space at the moment, a lot of the ring, but I think he's just trying to find himself, settle into some sort of rhythm, which he clearly hasn't found yet. Again, misses with that left hook. I'm doing a little counting as we go through this round, Spencer, and I don't want to prejudge it, but my question being formed in my head, like a little thought bubble at the moment, is how much right hand are we seeing from Wilkins? Not a lot. No, nope, we haven't seen any, have we? We've seen the double jabs, we've seen the lead the hooks, but we've not really seen too much and i tell you what at the end of the round yes it was a round that wilkins won just on volume and aggression really nothing really clear landing there but miranda would take a lot from that because you could see him as the round was going on he's thinking hold on a minute this kid's come with a massive reputation and he's not really showing me anything yet here's yet some of the action in that second round and we'll see there, the shot's falling short, see? The right hand missing wildly slow, from Wilkins. It? And the reason for that, Paul, was because he's not stepping in with his feet when he throws the jabs. He's stepping in with the jabs and holding his feet for the right hand. And so the right hand is falling short. Not found any sort of rhythm yet. He come with a high reputation, Wilkins, but not showed us too much. You couldn't have edited that clip yourself any better, because that was, a, thank you very much, that was the perfect little masterclass on that precise point. How did you do that, Spencer? <laughs> Just, I, I really don't know where it come from, Paul. He's quite good, isn't he? So round three. Wilkins away first. Leading off. High quality affair, this. at super featherweight. And again, that right hand is not an effective weapon at the moment for Wilkins. And moreover, Spencer, Moreno's seen it coming from somewhere down on the M1 at the moment, isn't he? But that, that's the thing, Paul, I think that what, uh, what Wilkins needs to do here is step in range with his feet and then let the shots go. He's trying to close the gap with his hands, not, and he should be closing it with his feet. And that's the big problem here. In boxing, it's m minimal margins that make the difference. Like two or three inches stepping in can be the difference between getting hit and not getting hit, falling short and hitting the target. And that's what we're seeing here with Wilkins. He's just not stepping stepping in enough when he does step in he's holding his feet with the right hand and, Mare and Morena's starting to fancy it here a little shake of the head dismissive from Morena as if to say I actually saw that coming all the way what a good contest this is yep high quality contest this both guys really thinking about it no one really taking the initiative Wilkins winning the rounds but he's not really stamped his authority on this contest yet and Moreno will get hope from that he will take a lot of hope from that Moreno uh, doesn't look like he's a man under any pressure at all fighting at his own tempo confident enough giving out the, all the signals that he doesn't think Wilkins can actually hurt him very much so Wilkins needs to keep the volume up, Spencer, doesn't he? But to echo your point, it's, it's to get the feet into the right position to make the right hand count in this fight. Absolutely, and that's, that's the, that's, that is the long and short of it, if I'm totally honest. I think that Wilkins at the moment, his timing's out. And, with, you know, if, if you've got one element of your game out, then it's like a domino, they're, they'll all fall, you know? And I think that nothing's working for him right now, Wilkins, because... The distance is not right, so the, the distance is out, the timing's out, the timing's out, the punch power's out. And that's the problem we've got. And as a consequence, I think to this point in the third round, we might both agree that this is Morena's best so far, and he's got a shot of putting this one in the book for me. Yeah, absolutely. I think that he's done enough in this one because we've not really seen anything from Wilkins. That was a better bit of work from him there, just a slow one to... Landed a good uppercut, trying to get on the inside. He's trying to change things up, actually. He's trying to... He's trying to... 
make those little adjustments. Adaptability is key in contests like this. But yeah, I'm with you, Paul. Moreno may have done enough to win that one. And a little cocky little strut to Moreno. He's well pleased with it. Look at that. He's well pleased with himself. That's a good round. And in the corner, they're now saying to him, look, you've got a chance here tonight. Well, that's exactly what it is. And you know, like I said, we give someone like Brian Moreno a chance, an opportunity, and he will take it. Because, you know, them victories mean a lot to him. He's get coming over here. He's not come over for the paycheck. He's actually come over for the victory. James Wilkins, he's come over with a big reputation. Roy Jones said, listen, this kid's always underachieved. I can see something in him. That I believe I can take him to the top. That's big talk, big praise from, you know, he's got to fill big shoes with someone like Roy Jones. Just off shot there. Spencer Roy was actually demonstrating to him how to throw that right hand off those angles that you were speaking about so it looks like everybody's on the same page here well let's hope that James Wilkins can put that into operation then he can put that into practice Moreno grabs the center of the ring his hopes are on the rise a little bit here 42 defeats against 15 victories and his last win was in a four-rounder at the York Hall Bethel Green uh, what September 2022 against Frank Arnold yep a contest where he come over he was not meant to win that contest but he, 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 he sensed that he could win it and he turned it up and he went out there and he took it and that's what James Wilkins has to be careful of here that he doesn't allow Moreno to get into any sort of rhythm because it would be difficult to break. Crowd are in raptures about this here tonight in Sheffield, knowing boxing crowd. Love coming to these kind of shows, Spencer, because you know everybody in the room has got an interest in boxing. Well, you got your hardcore boxing fan, haven't yeah. you? I mean, look at what we've got here, right? We're in, we're in a, we're in a, a roller skating arena in Sheffield. It's a small hall show. I think that's fair to say it's a small hall show. Maybe a thousand people, maybe just less in here. We've got the Olympic gold medalist Luke Campbell here. He's come to show his support. He loves coming to these sort of places. We've got the Hall of Fame of pound for pound star Roy Jones Jr. Here. I mean. It's crazy when you think about it. When you sit back, process it, Paul, you think, you know, unbelievable. Fight zone, talk sport. Kudos to them. And we've got the former world-class super bantamweight Spencer Oliver on commentary duty. He shouldn't get overlooked either. <laughs> but let's see how the super featherweight Wilkins gets control of this. Well, look, he's in the position now, right? He's got himself in the position here, Wilkins. He's there. He's up close. Now he can let those body shots go, whip the shots in, the go shots to the head, start showing us some... Use your imagination. Show us that actually you have that technical ability to do that. We know the treble jab's there, but let's see you being a little bit creative now. You know, set the traps. You've got a guy in the corner that was the most creative fighter of all time. You know, he would have shown you some of those trips. He would have shown you how to create openings, set traps let's see you put that into practice now because James Wilkins right now is underachieving on what we're hearing he can do all the perspiration in the world tonight it's adding up to points let's be clear about it for Wilkins but in terms of precision finishing there's a bit to do in this fight Yep, that's exactly what it is, you know. I think that you can see that it's frustrating because you can see the kid has natural ability. It's there, but it's just not pull it into practice tonight. It's just falling short. The timing just seems a little out. He looks like he's trying to create the openings. He looks like he's trying to do it. But he looks like he's trying to force it, Paul, if I'm totally honest. Maybe done enough again to take control and win that round, but was it impressive? Not really. You know, was it what we need to see? Not really. So some of the best of the action in this particular round spent. Yep, and here we go again. There you go, Moreno working the body. Wilkins doing a good job of covering up there. Can I ask, come right in on the technical side of that again, because we see Moreno 
coming back through the arc, left to the body, right to the body. Wilkins doesn't seem able to understand how to do that. No, Why is that? No, he's not. That's what I'm saying. When Wilkins gets up close, that's where he should be letting the shots go, driving the shots around the side, whipping them up the middle, creating the middles, uh, uh, creating the angle, stepping around the side, whipping, whipping them in again. But we're not seeing that. He's standing in front of his opponent, and everything's predictable. Unpredictability wins in the game of boxing. So four rounds in and it's it, to me even more intriguing than at the start tonight wilkins was away quickly did look the part off that really smart jab of his for rounds one and two but morena didn't panic bit closer in the third round one might argue morena back the fourth round and moreover there is no doubt spencer morena's more confident now than he was 15 minutes ago yep yeah, listen paul we're coming up to the halfway point of this contest after this round and this is all still to play for we thought by now Wilkins would have had a strong strong lead we knew Moreno was tough we knew it would be difficult to get out of there but from what we're hearing about Wilkins and the potential that this kid has got you're expecting him to deal with opponents like this is he doing that not yet this is a great contest an even contest that could go either way I'll say again though I don't think that they're gonna mind that if it is a hard night for Wilkins that he's got to work really really hard it's almost the case first with Roy Jones in that Spartan gym of his down in Florida that you you need to get the condition of the mind right first expect it to be hard because it's hard every day in training we know that yeah absolutely absolutely and I think that Roy plays a great part in that he's got that experience you know he's had the highs he's had the lows you know he's been to the very top and he's been to the very bottom as well in his career and that experience you can't buy that's better there from Wilkins just starting to get closer good left hook now starting to get up with his shots more Paul which is important the left hook lands again driving into the body and now Morena going with him but Wilkins starting to close the gap and that's what we wanted to see here this is where Wilkins wants to be good shot from Morena Morena looks like a man who doesn't mind fighting on the inside and doesn't mind taking one or two to get close Almost perhaps a case that Wilkins thinks to himself, I've got to actually show that I can, forgive the phrase, man up in that respect, up close. Absolutely, you know, dig in, yeah, we've seen the fancy footwork and that looks great. Yeah, it looks fantastic, but at some point you've got to bite down on your gum shield, get down in the trenches and show us what you've got because it becomes a psychological battle as opposed to a physical battle. The technical side of things, that goes out the window and it comes down to the will to win and who wants it most. And that's where we might go in this contest here. Finds him with a nice right hand there, but it's isolated, isn't it, from Wilkins. Pace drops a little bit. Not surprising because it has been fairly yeah, pacey not. stuff most of the way. That's good stuff there for Morena come back and Wilkins coming back. This is just starting to heat up ever so slightly now. A little smile on the face of Roy Jones in the corner and Wilkins is also having a little smile because they did start to find him with the right hand in this round a little bit i know the way roy jones operates spencer because I'm again saying to our viewers and listeners tonight i've had the great privilege of spending a bit of time with roy he programs his fighters to break the fight down into sections that's how he prepares so maybe maybe we'll ask roy later i hope maybe the idea tonight was to say right i want you to really work the kid over with the jab for three or four rounds and little by little we're going to introduce that right hand into the mix so we've just seen the first signs of that in this round and it'd be really intriguing to me now to see what happens th through six seven eight in this fight yep that's very interesting that an interesting breakdown and that could be very very true because he did start the first two or three rounds behind the jab he is now sitting down in his shots sitting in the pocket landing the right hand so let's see how we go now in the second half of this contest Certainly going to give Moreno something else to think about. Yeah, you suspect there's still another couple of twists and turns in this contest. 
We still want to see more from Wilkins. Moreno, we know well he is. We've seen him before. We know how tough he is. That was better from Wilkins. Got through with that right hand. The left hook landed there as well. Just forced Moreno's have stepped back a little bit there. That was probably one of the best shots from Wilkins and landed it again there. Paul, is he starting to find the distance now? Yeah. Looks like it a little bit. I thought Moreno did walk into a couple of incidentally to double up the power and he has to walk backwards quite sharply there, stumble backwards almost, just to regroup Moreno. Sense yep. of the pressure's coming on just a little bit. Yep, left hook seemed to land high there, just forced Moreno back, just seems to lose his senses there for a little bit, but regrouped very well, that's what he does. He's a very composed fight and never lets you know what's going on inside that head. But this is better stuff now from Wilkins. It is, and he's starting to throw that right hand more freely. In, and indeed, he's not frightened to miss with it, which is also important. Obviously, he has to, to land with it, but sometimes you just can't land. But you mustn't change your plan every 15 seconds. Yep, totally there you go. right. There right you hands go. there were really good by Wilkins, and he acknowledges that, Marina. But he says, let's go again. Yep, well that's what all the hype was about. When we see little bursts like that, you go, you know, the great man Roy Jones Jr. is saying, listen, I've got something here. Well, you can see it when he fights like that. We never saw that in the first few rounds. And hopefully now he's slipping into some sort of rhythm, Wilkins, because this is a better round. And Moran is having to reach a bit more. And he's taken a lot more big shots in this round. Wilkins looks very much to have his mojo back, doesn't he? I think when he's a touted kid, which he was five years ago, and then he loses the first two big tests of his career to Miguel Lopez over eight, and then Brian Chevalier over ten rounds, there's a lot of damage that he's sustained mentally from those two defeats, and that's the rebuild that they're working on the whole time with this guy. Paul, that's, you hit the nail on the head. It's not the physicalities, it's not the damage physically, it's the mental damage, and that is hard for a fighter to overcome. That psychological damage is difficult, you know, and I think that Roy Jones, having him in your corner, can rebuild that. People say you can't, when a fighter's mentally broken, he can't get that, regain that. Well, take a look at Anthony Joshua, and he's performing is in the last couple of fights people writ him off now all of a sudden we're talking about him being one of the best heavyweights in the world again so the answer is it can be rebuilt and we just started to see a little bit more from there from Wilkins Morena tried to give a little bit at the very end of the round because I think he sensed it was slipping away from him after a very good fifth round He's uh, a kid who's been around Moreno, he's packed a lot into his 27 years, approaching 60 fights and as well, Spencer, his fifth fight of 2024 and uh, I think he's got some kind of trading rights to UK territories, fought in the UK so often and what intrigued me about Moreno actually if you look through the weights, he's fought Gamal Yafai at 126, Kid Galahad in Sheffield it was, 132 pounds, Gary Cully up at 138, back down to James Tennyson, who did stop him early incidentally, Tennyson, a very destructive puncher, 136 for that fight, and so on and so on. Yeah, the list that he just read out there is quite a phenomenal list. And this kid goes in there and he gives them all a good run for their money. Yes, he does. No, he doesn't win the fights, but he gives them the rounds that they need. You know, he's there. He doesn't just come to lie down. And he's a tough, tough opponent. And he's proved a tough opponent tonight for James Wilkins as well. Wilkins not had it all his own way. He's had to think himself a little bit in here. You know, he's had to try and find that time in that rhythm. The last round was probably the best round of the contest for him. Now he needs to read build on it the other reason I think that they're very keen to ensure that Wilkins gets a lot of rounds under his belt there's a kind of mystery period in the career of James Wilkins I'm not privy to all the reasons but he was actually out for two and a half years between the end of 2021 and his return in uh, what uh, mid-march it was this year and that's a lot of rust for me yeah 
And like you say, Paul, we don't know the ins and outs of it, the troubles that he was having, or if he was having any troubles outside of boxing. You know, that's a general occurrence of some of these fighters. They go off the rails, they come back, and boxing really is the saviour. That's the beauty about the sport of boxing, that it does change so many lives. And we don't know that he's a victim, if he's been a victim of that or not, Wilkins. You know, we don't know what it is, but it is, but it is a big mystery. This has been fought at a really good pace so far, hasn't it? Minutes ago in the seventh round. You have to keep an eye on Moreni. You, you can never assume that you have subdued him. If you start to coast through a round, you'll say, right, thanks very much, that's half my job done for me, and he'll come on. Yeah, stand with Moreno, and that's where he likes to be. That's where he loves it. He loves getting down in the trenches. He's one of those rare breeds that loves taking, having a fight, and we're seeing that there as Wilkins is sitting with him. Tape comes loose. Referee will probably spot that soon, but Moreno having a nice little spell here, Paul. Yes, he is. This is and Roy doesn't like it. He's up on the ropes, and yeah. he's, uh, he's telling his opponent... He's, um, Protégé off there. Yeah. Big right hand there from Rayner as well. I've got to tell you, it's a good round and a round four for me. I think Wilkins felt that a little bit. Trying to show Welling with the clapperboard going for the end of the round. Ten seconds less than that now. And he'll see it through without a problem. But he did take quite a few. That was a good good stanza, that, for Moreno, wasn't it? Yeah, big round there for Moreno. Um, that was the first round he needed that. He needed to turn that around. That would be a good confidence booster for him and there was a look of concern on Roy Jones Jr's face let's take a look at some of the highlights of that last round and here we see the constant pressure from Moreno good right hand goes in just forces Wilkins back and Wilkins was standing in front of his opponent but just seemed to switch off there momentarily and Moreno sensed it jumped on it capitalized on it and put the shots together that's where he likes to be right hand through the middle body shots going in yes Wilkins was covering those ones but shots were getting through as well so three rounds to go in this contest and it's going to be interesting to see how it goes because one thing we do know is Moreno's got the tank has Wilkins I would never speak for Roy Jones but if I were to Spencer I'd say the last phrase in that corner was let's get cooking <laughs> and that's exactly what he needs to do. He needs to take the play away from Moreno now. He can't allow him to build on that because it's just a lapse of concentration from Wilkins in that round and allowed Moreno to get off with some silly shots. That was a nice left hook, followed by a big right hand, but big right hand back there from Moreno yeah. as well. That's payback in kind in cash, that is. Have your change and run away, Sonny. So a little bit of thinking required by Wilkins. Yeah, he can't take any liberties here, Wilkins. Moreno again finding that target with a right hand, looping it over, right hand again. He's just bowling it over like he's bowling a cricket ball here, Moreno. And he's getting success. It's going over the guard of Wilkins. Not seen a lot of that tonight as they embrace... Has all the hallmarks, Marden, although he's based in Spain nowadays, incidentally, all the hallmarks, Spencer, of a kid who's been working with professional boxers every day of his life from about the age of 12 and 13, learning all the tricks of the trade. Absolutely, and Paul, you know what those that them days were like for him when he was 12 and 13 in the back streets of South America somewhere working, digging, digging tough, sparring grown men, you know, that's how they're built, that's how they're tough. We've seen it over the years of our early days at Sky. You see those kids come over and you just know where they come from and how tough they are. He's a product of that, Marina. All the time he's looking for the angle to throw the right hand, Wilkins, but all the time he's being read by Morena. I don't know how you're going to fix that, Spencer, so I'm going to defer to somebody who knows a bit more about it than me. Yeah, Over to you. Absolutely. Listen, I think that what it is is we need some adaptability here, and I think that the good fighters can adapt and they can work it out. And at the moment, 
Wilkins, who I'm not saying he's not a good fighter, but I'm showing he's not showing us any adaptability. It's being one, but it's being a little bit one-dimensional and a little bit predictable. And I think you're going to get found out at a level there. You know, we've not seen that. Morena, no disrespect to him, is not at any sort of level. This kid is a gatekeeper for fighters to go on and do better things. He's tough and he'll always come and he'll always give it a go and he's always got ambition, but he rarely wins. And that's pretty much where we are with this. I wanted to see more from Wilkins and I've not seen it yet. He's made what could have been an easy night a very tough one. But again, Roy Jones in the corner won't actually be too disconcerted by that. I think it's still a fact-finding mission in terms of having him in his gym and he's learning plenty tonight. Moreno is well pleased with his efforts, clearly. Yep, I think they seem very pleased in the corner. Roy Jones giving the instructions again there, but look, they're getting the rounds under our belt. Like you say, Paul, he disappeared for a couple of years. He's only come back in March, so we can't be too hard on this kid. We have to give him time, and the most important thing is to get the rounds, and that's pr perhaps why they picked the opponent like Morena, because they know that he's going to get the rounds. Dennis Hobson, who's a good friend of Roy Jones, will go, listen, I'll give Wilkins an opponent, but he won't get rid of him. Yeah. And that was what maybe he needs, the rounds under his belt. And that's probably what they were going for, and that's why they were happy in the corner. You see Wilkins is dancing, he's enjoying himself. Roy seems happy in the corner as well. So, you know, not being too hard on this kid. Perhaps they're getting from it what they wanted. Round nine. So two to go. Wilkins would be in the lead. That match is fairly clear, I think. Moreno's giving a really good account of himself and keeping Wilkins on watch. Wilkins can't coast over the line. That's exactly what they wanted tonight for James Wilkins. Yep, Wilkins is getting the rounds that he wanted, that's for sure. And I'm sure they'll want to get him out relatively soon again if he comes out unscathed. And he's doing a good job at the moment, starting to find the range with that jab. Just fell short with the right hand. That seems to have been a common problem all night for him there. And the reason that is, Paul, like I said to you, he's not stepping in with his front foot. He's holding his feet when he's letting the shots go. And how much of that could that be confidence, Spencer, as well? Like a golfer who suddenly thinks, I can't play this shot anymore. I'll, What's I'll, gone wrong? I'll give you an example. Anthony Joshua, before he knocked out Robert Hellanius, six rounds, the first six rounds, he was throwing the one-two but holding his feet and reaching with the punches. The first time he stepped in, boom, he landed the right hand since then he's rediscovered that confidence in his own ability and he's gone on and done what he's done and put himself right back up there and that was all about believing in himself self-belief stepping in with your shots and if a fighter don't believe in himself he won't step in the other question on it that I would like to ask Wilkins one time is actually did he hurt his right hand at some point along the way because that's another reason it can happen isn't it yeah absolutely we've not seen him really throwing it too much and when he has thrown it he's fallen short of it is he doing that on purpose mm. is he meant to be doing that just a bit of kidology you know all these things could be going on nonetheless if he keeps about his business which he is doing in this round he's doing a, a good job of looking busy or trying to look busy and it's enough yeah absolutely he's listen he's doing enough to steal the rounds is he doing enough to set the world alight no nope, definitely not but maybe that's not the mission here maybe it's about getting the rounds under the belt you know and this is a working progress Correct. is probably the best way of putting it the job which he lost for a big high rating was that nabo featherweight fight against brian chevalier that would have really opened doors in the top 10 wouldn't it a world level for him yep. didn't happen and still feeling the effects of it somewhere mentally perhaps more than physically but what is good tonight spencer is he is showing that he's a he could be a proposition i think that's true isn't it yeah listen he's getting the rounds under his bank and you know he's never been in any sort of trouble and he's pushing moreno and he's trying things out the timing's been bad but that's expected you know he's had a long time out he come back in march so he's still trying to find his feet a little bit solid jab there from him it was the best shot he's landed for a while, just trying to chop down with the right hand as well. So he's got the idea, I can see that he's understanding it. It's just that it's not fitting together at the moment, Paul. It's like, you know, driving a car and going from first gear to third without going into second. There's little elements missing from his game that I'm sure are there, because I think he's got the ability to do it, but we're just not seeing it right now.
One or two smiles in the corner. Some of the action in that ninth round. And again, it's been that Morena just throwing the volume of punches. And um, Wilkins just trying to work out, setting up traps. Just seems to be seems to be battling with himself as well in there, you know, just not like the mental battles, trying to work stuff out and just maybe getting rid of stuff that he needs to and offloading stuff that he needs to. And I think that's a big part of it maybe with Wilkins is that psychological stuff and putting certain demons to bed, etc. So the final round underway, 10 at super featherweight for James Wilkins, a fighter still with pretensions to becoming one of the top men. It's not going to get there tonight on the basis of this, but it's about rebuilding some of those damaged foundations, as Spencer so eloquently put it. And in that respect, I think so far it's a job well done, really. Yep, totally agree with that. Tape just come loose there. Roy Jones just cutting that, restrapping it. Good spot there from the referee. Marina again has been terrific. Much more than just a game loser. Extending Wilkins, making him think. I, I think Spencer and I both think he's claimed at least two rounds of this so far. Yeah, I think the, yeah, you have to give Moreno a couple of rounds here, definitely. You know, he's been forever trying. And he's never give up hope. You know, he's never got frustrated. He, he kept his mindset together. And it's been important, you know. I think it's been really important because there were times where you felt that he could have lost hope. He just slowly, but he just kept chipping away, chipping away. And he's made a decent contest of it, to be fair. It's either fight like this on a Saturday night, Spencer, or get paid less to do it Monday to Friday in a gym if you're Morena, and obviously this is better. <laughs> Absolutely. Absolutely. But he'll probably be doing both knowing yeah, Morena. Exactly, he'll yeah. be back in that gym Monday morning and picking up that work as well. Yep, story of the contest there with Wilkins just missing, just off timing with that left hook, just falling short. It's all been hustle and bustle from Wilkins, but with no real conviction, and that's been the problem. Wilkins is starting to enjoy it. There were one or two doubts creeping in for a while, maybe around the fourth, fifth, sixth round, but he knows he's got the job done in terms of getting the win, which is the prime reason to come to Sheffield. And hopefully to uh, get a bit of publicity for his efforts, a bit of acclaim for what he's doing. You know what, Paul, it's back to the drawing board, isn't it? Like you say, you get 10 good rounds under your, under your bank, you're on for, foreign soils, you get that international experience, you go back to the drawing board and go, right, tick to box, there you go, because it's not about where you start, it's about where you finish, and we've got that little road in between, and it is a little bit bumpy, and you will hit a couple of bumps, but as long as you get to the final destination, and I think that that's the long-term goal with these two, Wilkins and Roy Jones. We didn't see any evidence there that he can go on and win world titles on that performance, but Roy Jones, who ain't a bad judge of character, he sees something in him. He wouldn't be here if he didn't believe in him, so there must be something there. It's a victory for Wilkins on our scorecards anyway, but maybe not as impressive as I, as I was hoping. We'll give him a bit of time, Spencer, I think. He's well pleased. Got a few demons off his back tonight, that's very clear, with the performance level overall. And Morena, again, we salute him for being a really good pro. Yeah, absolutely. You know, he comes here, he brings it. And he is what it says on the tin. He's tough, he's rough, and he keeps going. Some of the good highlights through this contest we're just watching there. And he was making a good contest of it, to be fair. Moreno, very, very impressed. 
very good stuff and um, yeah it's a bit before your time Spencer but the next line is of course Moreno could do 15 rounds absolutely he's that type, isn't he? absolutely absolutely go and he would do that I think actually he would relish it he's one of the rare breed that would love that Moreno he, like, he's got that engine that he'd just keep going they're both getting a great hand definitely potential there from Wilkins that's for sure Ladies and gentlemen, could we please have a big round of applause for both of our boxers? After 10 rounds of action, we go to our referee, Reese Carter's scorecard, which reads 99 points to 91 in favour of your winner, James! It was about right. I think all our viewers would score it roughly about that. Wilk is not perfect, but a very convincing winner nonetheless. At the very least, off that tonight, Spencer, I will say that Wilkins would be uh, an adornment to any bigger boxing night in the UK just on the basis of what we've seen tonight would you agree yeah absolutely you know I think there's um, there's more nights for Wilkins in the UK I think we're gonna see more I think that I think that the potential is definitely there and um, Roy Jones if anyone can bring it out and him it will be Roy Jones yeah and we hope that Roy will be back very shortly as well I only mention it because it's by tradition not something that the American fighters on the way up would do but there have been a few exceptions haven't there Absol over the years? absolutely absolutely and I think that you know Roy often comes over to these shores he's fond of the British fans the British fans love him you know he's got a prospect there you've got to give this kid a chance you go you can see that the, you, you can see the natural talent that he's got but you know don't hold him you know don't hold him as like oh this kid he's not world class give the kid a chance you know let him breathe we don't know what his backstory is why he's been out of the ring for a couple of years but he has the good thing is he's back and he's under the watch fly of Roy Jones and it's going to be um yeah, it's going to be interesting to see his development over the next um, couple of months. OK, Spencer. We're also, as I think our viewers are aware, we've got the one and only Stacey Copeland on the team tonight. She's been doing a great job as well. And Stacey's now going to speak to uh, our winner. And I think she's got one or two other famous people along with the winner, Wilkins. Stacey, over to you. James, you're in against a tough cookie there. He's given plenty of trouble to his opponents previously. Talk us through how difficult it was for you in that. Um, first of all, I want to thank my Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ and Nazareth, for the opportunity. I want to thank my coach, my manager, Roy Jones Jr. And I want to thank Dennis Hobson for giving us the opportunity and a bright future with him. So I thank him for that. And for the opponent, he was a very tough veteran, durable. He, he just beat an Olympian, I believe, out here. So I was aware of that. He's a good opponent, tough guy. And I didn't want to go in there cold, so I just fought very smart. Like my coach Roy Jones teaching me, fight at 60% and we progress. If we get the knockout, we get it. If we don't, we just win in spectacular fashion. We know that boxing has some incredible stories behind some fighters. Yes. You've got one of them who coaches you, of course. Your story is incredible, what you've been through. Yes. Coming from a real difficult situation, being homeless, really struggling. Talk us through what this means to you to have these opportunities and to be building your career now in this way. It means everything to me because to not only find Christ and find Jesus, but help me with that, to have somebody like Roy Jones Jr. behind me that he established everything in boxing. He don't need me, I need him. So to have him be able to stand beside me and just be alongside of me is amazing. It's my fight, favorite fighter in, in the world. Roy, it's a pleasure to have you here in Sheffield, of course. It's been a real buzz all week. You are an icon, a legend, a Hall of Famer, of course. Uh, so it's a real pleasure and a privilege for everybody to have you here. What did you make of his performance this evening? Were you happy? Very happy. Uh, great performance. He took a smart fighter into deep waters like he should have. 
This guy's a very strong puncher. He's not a guy you can just underestimate. And I was hopeful that he didn't underestimate him. They would listen, and he did. So he said, coming back to me, he's going to be a different guy. He's going to fight smarter. He's going to do as I asked him to do. And that's exactly what he did tonight. So I'm very happy with it. You've got a great team around you now. You're in position to really kick on. You showed all of your arsenal there, what you had in the locker. Really, really good performance. What are you hoping for now for 2024? It's going to be an amazing year. I have a great team with me, and they know exactly what I want. I want to be a champion like my coach Roy Jones Jr., and I want to be a legend like him. So I just believe in them, and whatever they have for me, we'll take. It's an absolute pleasure. Well done tonight. I know the crowd really enjoyed it. You've earned a few sh Sheffield fans now. How's it been in Sheffield, by the way? It's amazing. I, I, love, I love London. I love Sheffield, and I'm, I'm grateful to call this home. I'm happy. It's great to have you here. You're more than welcome. Good performance, Roy. Pleasure to have you here. Well done. All my geezers, hello. <laughs> hello to the Sheffield geezers. Well done. Congratulations. Stacey Copeland on interview duty with us tonight here on Fight Zone. I don't know, also on Talk Sports. Thank you very much, Stacey. We're looking again at some of the work produced tonight by the winner and a very talented fighter he remains, Wilkins. And just a little bit too much in his game all round for a very game opponent, Marena, the Nicaraguan. And what a buzz in the whole arena with Roy Jones at work on Fight Zone. A long line of autograph hunters, even longer than the line of autograph hunters for Spencer Oliver, and that's saying something. Well, not sure, quite sure of that, Paul. I've been out there offering my services to the crowd here. Photos, autographs. No one's really taken me up. No, that's not true either. But we all know our place in life, Spencer. Yep, that was um, a decent little contest there. And it's great to have Roy Jones Jr. in the house, isn't it? How good is that? I mean, look. You know, you when, when Roy is at his best and you're really appreciating everything that he used to do. And now to see him here and bring him through that next generation. Paul, it's so good to see someone of Roy's calibre giving back to the sport, isn't it? Well, he does it in his own way as well. That's the thing I like most about him. He's not following off somebody else's lead and he's worked around some of the greats of the game as you well know Spencer but uh, and he learns from all of the people he's been involved with but he does it his own way in his own part of the world away from the spotlight young Mr Eubank was one who benefited hugely from the experience and it's a quite holistic approach from what I understand as well there's a lot of time that Roy spends with his fighters not in a ring not in the gym and not in the weights room that He's trying to, as you, a phrase you used actually, trying to rebuild a fighter's mentality. Uh, and he uses all kinds of lessons and uh, examples from his own life and from, from the wider world, drawing on his own life experience. Yeah, I mean, it's fantastic, isn't it? I mean, you've spent time with him, so you know him as a person. You know, you know him, you know the real Roy Jones. And it, my understanding is, he's a lovely, humble human being. He's unbelievable, absolutely. Most star fighters we know just do have that ego, it's part of the package. And the, the name I used a moment ago, Eubank, well, you know, people are going to join the dots when I say that, that kind of thing. It takes something very special to do what you guys did for a living. Roy has got it hidden, it's the hidden tiger in him, of course, but he, he does not enjoy particularly if people make a fuss about him. He can be quite reticent, a bit like Lennox Lewis, I think, in that way. We know that the ego's in there, we know that the star quality's in there, but he is, to me, a bit like Lennox, in the sense that he's actually quite happy in his own skin, in his own home place, with the people he trusts around him. Slightly different mentality. Yeah, fantastic. Fantastic to get a little insight into that. I think we are now actually ready. OK, Spencer, on we go now. It's our top of the bill time and 12 rounds for an important title for the two men involved in it. And let's get back to Robert Blundell. Ladies and gentlemen. 
Ron Hogg gives final instructions for both boxes. Okay, boys. You've had your instructions in the changing rooms, you know what I expect. Keep us clean at all times. Protect yourself at all times. Be a light commander at all times. Touch close. The atmosphere has gone up a notch. Sheffield's own Keenan Wainwright. Louis Horn from Chigwell in Essex. A very important night in the career of both of these guys. Wainwright defending this title on home territory, of course. And they've decided to go for broke, in a sense, in the career of Louis Horn. He's only 22 years of age, Spencer. And they're going to push him on to uh, a major moment in his career tonight if he comes through this yep massive um, massive gamble for Louis Hall who's an exceptional talent but he has only had five contests and so he's going into his sixth contest in a 12 rounder that is that is you know they must have a lot of hope in this kid a lot of belief in this kid is probably a better way of putting it Wayne White is a proven champion he's tough he's been there he's come back from those defeats Southport very awkward you know and he is the champion so he's going to have all that in his advantage so huge opportunity for Hall and a big risk but they are supremely confident the losses very early in his career second pro fight actually for Boris Shikunov and latterly to Ethan James James in terms of build not dissimilar actually to Horn yeah, Horn, very tall, very rangy. Long, thin legs, Horn. Drives the body shots in well there. No trouble though for Wainwright, who's just staying nice and composed, staying in front of his opponent. Keeps the head moving, so he's not a sitting target, which is good. Just drives that left hand through the middle there. Tactically, Spencer, how would you expect Wainwright to try to dominate, given that he's at home, that he is the champion and as we all know occasionally a southpaw is a bit too much of a handful for a young fighter who's orthodox yeah i think the wayne white's just got to look to take horn into deep waters later on in the contest keep chipping away trying slowly systematically break him down like he's doing now just edging forward trying to force the pace make wayne white work when he doesn't want uh, sorry make horn work when he doesn't want to work Take him into them deep waters and see if he can swim. You know, 10, 11, 12, the penultimate rounds. That's when you'll find out the makeup of a fighter. What a step up it is. And also, he's been out for, what, nine months, maybe more than that, actually, Louis Horn. His last appearance in, uh, what, actually the first day of July 2023 in a six-rounder at the York Hall. This is quite elite, isn't it, in every sense? It certainly is, you know, it's, it's high high ambitions going into a, a commonwealth silver a lightweight title fight in only a six contest yeah you know for the for the for the people that are tuning in and maybe don't watch boxing on a regular basis to let you know going in to a 12 rounder in your six contest is relatively unheard of so huge huge props to louis hall for taking this contest well, but maybe they're feeling lucky we've got the famous casino ne just next door Maybe we might see them all in there later, <laughs> if they're on a roll. Well, listen, if he pulls it off, Paul, I think I'll, I'll definitely be backing whatever they're backing. Nice, tidy start. Yeah, Wayne Wright maybe just edging that one with the, with the better work. He was staying nice and composed. Yes, Louis Horn definitely had his successes on the outside and switched the attacks well to the body. But for me, Wayne Wright maybe just landing the cleaner shots of the two. Good opening round for both guys and expect this contest to heat up by the way. I know both guys, this title means so much to these, both of these guys because they both know what opportunity it is, what doors it can open and when you get that and fighters at this stage, they'll both roll the dice man and that is for sure. There are a lot of very good lightweights in the United Kingdom at the moment and uh, Spencer rightly says the winner of this fight just 
gets put into the conversation with some of the star names, led of course by Sam Lopes. Well, oh, big right hand there. Yes. And, oh, Wayne White Wayne in right desperate trouble. Right Horn's right landed hand big shots. Horn back on his feet. He slipped slightly, and the momentum in the attack was stopped by that. Two huge right hands there went in, and Wayne White walked straight onto them, and he's in. Desperate trouble here, his legs are still not quite right and he's got to stay composed here, stay tight. Right hand goes in again and Hong's found the range of that shot and he's nailing Wayne Wainwright with it. He can't miss at the moment, there's great concern in that corner, the Wainwright corner. They didn't see it coming any more than the first of the right hands which really shook Wainwright to his bootstraps. But smartly trying to bob and weave take the sting out of the horn offensive at the moment and that little bit of experience that he has over horn is showing itself I think Spencer over the last 40 seconds or so he didn't panic no he kept nice and composed there but he didn't lose his shape did he, he didn't fall to pieces which was important there from Wayne Wright he's got great experience you know in his corner and, and, and they're gonna need to pull him through this but he now seems to have got himself back together. Hall is dangerous, he's long, he's rangy, and he's dangerous with that backhand, and that's the shot to get us out for. Exactly. But Glenn Rhodes in the corner of Wayne White, he, you know, he's got a wealth of experience, as I was saying, and they're gonna have to use that. Good work there for Wayne White as well. Just a little reminder to Hall that he's still in this contest. Told you this one was gonna heat up nicely for him. That's exactly what he's doing here in the second round. Wainwright is having no problem finding him with the jab. The good range of shot in Louis Horn. Massive left hook again there from Horn. Wainwright took that shot well, took the right well as well. And I tell you what, the way this is going, Paul, I'm not sure we're going to hear this final bell because both guys are rolling their dice here. They're both loading up. And there's not a lot in the way of defence coming back from any of them, but they are both digging their heels in here. Problem is, Wainwright's being forced to give a lot of ground, actually, Spencer, isn't he? He certainly is. There's a good body shot gone in there from Hall as well. Slam that shot under the ribs. Right hand, that's the dangerous shot from Hall. Wainwright's got to be careful of that. Hands held high. And Spencer, he's been outreached a little bit by... by uh... Horn is Wayne right. Is that the reason why Horn is able to come back so often with the right hand? Yep, Horn's the one that's found the range at the moment. Wayne Wright, yes, he had a little bit of success there, which was important, but the most effective work come from Horn. The most damaging work come from Horn. There we saw a big right hand just took the legs away from Wayne Wright. He done well to stay on his feet, and that's how Horn followed it up there. Big right hand again, loaded it up. Wayne Wright to his credit kept his composure but Horn does look dangerous when he lets those shots go there's some real venom in what he does there when he loads up he puts everything into that is he gambling will he be able to do that for 12 rounds who knows but I spoke to him like I say in the hotel earlier on and they they knew something that I didn't because they went listen mate I ain't losing this contest and on that evidence you go he's got a great shot here A big early breakthrough, but stressing it is still early. Wainwright didn't panic. Did a good job of resetting himself, recomposing, and he looks to box his way into this third round. Yep, yeah, no one's really took the initiative in this contest. Good left hand there from Wainwright. Come over with a good right hook as well. Good right hand back there from Horn. So, yeah, like I say, no one really stamped their authority, but you just feel that if one of them just takes this, this fight could be turned on his head in a split second. One or two of these shots from Horn have been with the inside part of the glove or the uh, wristband area. And Glyn Rhodes between rounds was making a point to the referee. I don't know for certain that that was the point, but there is a point to be made about that. Need yeah. to be careful of that. Yeah, absolutely. The referee will be keeping an eye on that. I know Glenn wasn't happy about something. Better work there from Wayne Wright. Went to the body, come over the top with that. 
right hook as well, which was effective. And that's better work from him. That's what he needs to do, Wayne White. Right? Just keep chipping away, working there. And for Horn, he just needs to relax and start letting those shots flow because he knows that he can hurt his opponent and now he's loading up on it. Could that be his undoing? Still developing, still only 22 years of age, Louis Horn. The talent is very obvious, but it's a mighty big step for one so young tonight. We can only salute the way he started it. Yep, it really is. It's going to be a coming of age fight for him if he does come through that. That is for sure. But high, high gamble, big risks. And now Wayne White just seems to have slipped into a rhythm a little bit here. I'm not sure they can continue this sort of pace though, Paul, with this sort of intensity for 12 rounds. I'm really not because everything is loaded up on. The jab's loaded, the right hand's loaded, the hook's are loaded. There's no fluidity in any of the work. So that's got to take something out of you. I would just ask as well, Spencer, whether you think that Wainwright, who is, is certainly getting into his rhythm, that has he really worked torn out just yet? I don't think that he has. No, I don't think he has either. I think that Wainwright's game plan here, Paul, is just to slowly chip away at Hall and wait for him to come apart himself. Yes. I think he's banking on Hall coming apart in the second half of the contest because Hall is that tall, wiry character he must struggle to make the weight and is that the gamble here just to get him into that deep waters in the second half of the contest well a much better round there from Wainwright he slipped back into that after that second round was a big round for Horn Wainwright for me regained the Horn um regained composure there and got himself back into the driving seat for and I think that was massively important some of the action here in that third round, you see there the left hook from Wayne White, right hand through the middle from Horn. That's the shot against the south four, but Horn sitting patiently on the outside, waiting to load up with those big shots. But Wayne White just chipping away, popping out that south four jab, switching the shots downstairs, using good variety. Good, com good competitive contest this really so is. far. Excellent. So an intriguing battle is building up already, living up to our hopes for it. It's tight so far overall between Keane and Wainwright defending this Commonwealth silver lightweight title. Lewis Horn has given a really good account of himself so far. Yeah, he certainly has, Horn. And like I say, there's a, there's a big, big load of confidence in that camp for Horn. Oh, big shot from both guys. Horn that Horn's left worse. just buckle a little bit there, but both guys landed simultaneously. Both took it well, to be fair. Horn stepped off the rope, which was a good sign for him and his corner. And stepped into his man in very impressive fashion. That determination that Spencer Oliver referred to today, that belief, that inner strength demonstrated there. But this is good from Wainwright, finding the target now. Yeah, just slipping into a rhythm a little bit there, Wayne, right? And that could be key in this contest. Brilliant. Oh, big right Superb hand. combination. Superb combination by Wayne, right? Horns, okay for me. But is there going to be more of this in this round from Wayne, right? That was top draw. Yeah, could this be the turning of the tide? A lovely one, two, three combination. Nice and relaxed there. Finish with a left hand through the middle. He's got him again, Spencer. And Horn fires back with that right hand. That's his main hope at this moment. He slides down the rope into his own corner. Wainwright's as cool as anything. Yep, yeah, Horn just loading up a little bit too much. Waiting a little bit too long here, Horn. Sitting in the corner, he needs to get out of there. He needs to do something. Move, because he's allowing Wainwright, with the more experience, to set the traps here. He's not wasting anything. Wayne Wright, really impressive that from me, from my point of view. Yeah, beautiful work behind the southpaw jab again there, jarring the head back of Horn. This is punishing stuff here from Wayne Wright, and he's starting to ooze confidence now. 
And the younger man, Horn, is finding out now about the pressure of being in a 12-round championship contest. We asked if it was a step too far too soon for a talented fighter. We're about to get our answer here. Yeah, big shots going in now. He's finding his target with regularity, isn't he? Now, Wainwright is getting through constantly, pretty much at will. And Hall needs to do something here to turn this around. He needs to throw some more shots. He's throwing single right hands at the moment, Paul, and that is not enough. He needs to start using his imagination, putting the shots together. Let's see some shots flowing here. He's standing there and trying to trade too much. He's in mid-range, really, the whole time. He's going to have to get in shorter, Spencer, or get away on the outside. And I don't think he's got the legs to do that. That's exactly what it is. You'd think that use your attributes, use your height, your reach. You know, that's, that's where you're going to be successful. Big round there from Wayne Wright. That was a big turning of the tide there. It's like he turned the screw. Was much needed and home for me, taking way too much punishment. I must say, I was really impressed by Wayne Wright in that round. I know you rate him. I see why now. Yeah, absolutely. Listen, class act, you know. Sometimes a loss for a fighter can be the making of a fighter and I think for Wayne Wright that's what it seems to have been, he seems to have gone back to drawing board, he won the, uh, he won the um, Commonwealth Silver lightweight title in his last contest and that's what he can do, it can elevate you to another level and I think that's what we're seeing from Wayne Wright in this contest, Horn I don't think is expecting this sort of performance. Can I just say, how good is the lightweight division in Britain at the moment? Absolutely phenomenal. Do you know what? Boxing in Britain in general at the moment is absolutely superb. So many high-quality operators. And here are two of them who deserve a bit more publicity. And maybe this fight is going to be the launch pad. Paul, I was exactly going to say that. This is the gate. This is the gateway to that. You know that publicity. You know this is this is the this is the step and this is the platform, by the way, that it gives these kids the exposure that they're lacking. You know, and I think that the Talksport Boxing YouTube channel really is investing in that, which is important for these sort of shows. You cannot afford to let Wainwright let the shots go because he's got all the variety, you know, up and down in a try, and he's a really two-handed operator when he comes forward. Yeah, he just slowly chip away, won't he, and just sort of take that, slow, slowly and systematically break you down. Where Horn is really loading up with that right hand, he's putting absolutely everything into it. That's what he's gambling on, I think. Absolutely intriguing fight, this. Well, Dennis Hobson, the promoter, Fight Zone promoter, told me that this one was going to be special, and he weren't wrong. Horn has given himself a little bit more space in this round to get that right hand going again. But Wainwright's now worked him out. You said from about halfway through the second round, Spencer, Wainwright, the mind was working over time to solve the puzzles and you felt it was happening, and we're seeing the evidence of that now. Yeah, we certainly are. Horn is trying to go with him. He's drilling Dev's right hands through. He still looks dangerous. Just missed with a left screw shot there as well. But there's a nice composed look, isn't there, about Wayne Wright and his work. He's just taking his time. Great cracking little contest, this one. Well, the pace had to start at some point, Paul. Oh, and as I say that, left hand goes through the middle again and catches Horn, who takes the shot very well. But I was saying the pace had to start at some point. Blistering start to the contest here. My sense is that they're both building up to a big attack in this round again to try and make sure they win the round because it's open to question, isn't it? Absolutely, yeah. Both guys have had their success. No one's really stamped their authority. 30 seconds left in the round and it can be won and lost, Paul, in these last 30 seconds. Wainwright working his way in, trying to find that angle. Close quarters now. 
Paul a little bit reluctant to continue that, but he found a really nice uppercut on the way out. No, it was a lovely little slip move, actually. Yeah, a little cheeky shot there, wasn't it? He pulled the uppercut, twisted and turned. Lovely little reminder that Paul's still very much in this. Not sure what way that round went. It was a very close one. Well, if you don't know, I don't know. Yeah, it was one of those that both guys had their successes and um, a difficult round to split. Three judges scoring it. Somebody it to them. Yeah, some of the action there in that fifth round, and you'll see the success. The big left hand through the middle, the right hand through the middle there from Horn. Was that an inside in fact that did that do enough to catch the judges' eyes? Or did that what we just saw from Wayne right? The fluidity, the fl the combination of punches in bunches, you know, the rhythm of the shots landing. Three, four, five. Is that enough to catch the judges' eye? Subjective scoring, I suppose, what you like, but very close round. It's a thriller, all right, here in Sheffield tonight. In the skate centre beside the casino. All bets are off on the outcome of this one. In the horn corner, they're urging him to do what Wainwright has done and build the rhythm. It's a good call, actually. He could yeah. do with that. That's exactly what he needs to do. The inexperience is not allowing him to do that. Maybe the ego is taking a part on that. He's loading up. He's trying to trade rolling and dice blow for blow. But we'll tell you one thing that happens in a boxing ring. Once it's happened, it's gone. It's history. Don't, don't, don't digest. Don't think about it too much. Let it go, right? Because if you if you allow that to get you, that's when you start. Your game plan goes out the window. You get caught with a shot. Boom! It's gone. Forget about it. Get on with the rest, and I think that that's where maybe Horn's making the mistakes here. He's getting caught with those big right hands, and he's thinking about, I've got to get one back. I need to land one back. No, it's gone. Forget that. Stick to the game plan. Lovely angles here from Wainwright. In, out, and away. Yeah, nice rhythm about his work now. Wainwright isn't there now. You can see him that he's trying to look for the openings. Trying to set the traps, Horn's waiting to load up with a big right hand, and that's the problem here. And maybe the difference between these two at the moment is Wayne White is throwing combinations and Horn is loading up too much. From the back of the hall, I think that left hook to the body looked quite a good shot, but he didn't quite time it, Horn. Wainwright was unperturbed by it. I think in the Horn corner, I'm getting the vibe that they'd just like to see their boy work boxing a bit more than he's boxing at the moment, Spencer. That's exactly bang on, Paul. That's the, except the advice that they're screaming from the corner. This work, get behind the jab, use your attributes, make a hard fight easy, keep him at range, don't allow him in. That's what was working in the first round, and you've neglected that, and you've allowed Wainwright to take over for that reason only. Wainwright dominating proceedings in this round from the middle of the ring, fighting at a, a pace which seems to suit him. Yep, at a distance that seems to suit him as well, and that's the important thing here. I think whoever, cr cr whoever controls the space controls the fight. At the moment, that is Wainwright. Not by much, but it is Wainwright. Yep, I totally agree with that. Another round in the bag for me, for Wainwright. But you're right there, Paul. I think that it's a very competitive fight and a very... Paul is very much in this one still, and he's shown that he's got the power to hurt Wainwright, but that's what he's focusing on too much. For me, Wainwright has got into a rhythm, he's used that experience, he's taking his time, and he's controlling the space. Let's take a look at some of the action in that sixth round. See there, Wainwright slipping from side to side, just finding the range with the jab. Why has Louis Horn neglected that jab in this contest? You heard the corner screaming to him, get the jab going. Find the range with a jab, double up on the jab, and then let the right hand go. Don't roll the dice and just try and hit him with the right hand because that's what's losing in the contest. I know this is 
Wainwright territory in Sheffield, but Horn has brought a lot of supporters with him tonight. They've had their moments of encouragement. It's a brilliant atmosphere. Yeah, it really is. They really appreciate their boxing up there and they're getting the value for money, especially in this contest because both guys are putting it all on the line and leaving it all in the ring here. These are sharp punches. Not exactly in bunches, however, from Horn. Ones and twos. Wainwright staggered. I think that Wainwright saying it was low, but I don't th think it was. And the referee, more importantly, doesn't think it no, was. No, I didn't see that as being a low blow either. Was that a shot that maybe Horn should have capitalised on? Maybe. Wayne might get on with it, as he has to do. But it will encourage Horn to go un underneath the right lead of Wainwright a bit more often, perhaps. About where the W is uh, uh, on, the on, the waistband. on the waistband of Wainwright. The wolf, Keenan Wainwright. He got bitten there, the wolf. <laughs> he certainly did. This, and this, this contest is still very much up for grabs. You know, I think that Wainwright has been doing a good job of just using the experience and maybe just nicking the rounds. But Horn is by no means out of this contest. He is still very much in this contest. And Wainwright now bleeding heavily from the nose. And as I say, that puts in a brilliant combination. There could be some hard rounds ahead in this fight as well. Whoa, lovely jab again there from Wainwright. Horn's loading up, body shot goes in as well. Really mixing them up. I'll tell you something, one thing we found out about Horn tonight, he can take a shot, Absolutely. that is for sure. And he's still right in it. One or two technical limitations may have been exposed, but he's still young, he's still learning, and he's learning plenty tonight, but we're learning plenty about him. This has been a good round for Horn. He's been more accurate, Spencer. Yep, he has. He's, you know, both guys have been trading. Both guys have been getting off the shots, but Horn's really trying to force this one. And again, the right hand goes in, and is he sensing it? Just the turning of the tide here. As Wayne he right. just knocks a bit of wind out of Wayne White, because yep. there seems to be no real venom in his shots right now. Wayne Wright's given ground a couple of times, and... To back this round, he needs a really big finish to it. Otherwise, for me, this belongs to Horn. Body shot goes in again, right under the elbows there of Wayne Wright. Right hand goes in, and yep, this is a good round for Horn. This big round, and Wayne Wright starting to question himself. This is where he has to show that championship material, bite down on his gum shield, and try and pull it back because Horn has just turned the tide a little bit here. And a little fist pump by Horn, well pleased with that round and so are the men in his corner tonight. Yes, yeah, certainly is. Yeah, because some of the action in that round, Wayne Wright getting caught, Horn landing the right hand, catching him on the end of that shot. Wayne Wright just lost his composure a little bit in that round. Spencer, please give us your insight. When a, a fighter, especially a young fighter, has been under a bit of pressure, as Horn was, for a few rounds, and then he comes up with something like that in, in the second half of a 12-round championship fight, how much of a boost does that give a, oh, that's a younger huge. fighter? That's huge. He needed that massively. The younger fighter needed that because he needed that confidence booster. That was so important because... He may have felt like the fight was starting to slip away from him and if he never turned the tide at some point, he would start losing heart and, and soul in, in his own performance. So that was hugely needed, that good round there from Hall. So back over to you, Keenan Wainwright, at a period in the fight where you seemed to be getting the upper hand and controlling it. There's another one off the inside of the glove and this time it is picked up by the referee. Yeah, the referee's keeping a close eye on that. That's what Glenn Rhodes, the corner of Wayne White, were complaining about early on in the contest. One thing I can guarantee, Paul, both these guys are going to feel it in the morning, that is for sure.
little bit of a pause from Wainwright to consider the game plan overall. He is a thinking fighter. Well, you know what? It's been such a high intensity, this contest, that you've got to expect these guys to take a breather a little bit. And so one guy not applying the pressure. The other one's thinking, you know what? I'm, I'll go with that. I'll take a little breather here. So Wainwright again trying to set the tempo. Horn believes he can catch him just like that with the right hand. That didn't miss by very much. No, both guys loading up there with the rights, weren't they? They're both willing to stand there and trade. They're both sitting in the pocket. This one's going to come down to mental strength. Who wants it the most? You know, once this, the fatigue starts setting in because it's been high-paced contest. This good body shot there from Horn again. But Spencer, in the early part of this fight, you spoke about the more experienced fighter, the champion, Wainwright, setting few traps. For me, Horn is starting to set a few traps, just like that right there. Absolutely. For Wainwright to solve. That's what makes this so intriguing. Yep, just when you think the action's going one way, the other guy grabs the ball by the horns and turns it around. And that's, you know, that's a mark of a good fighter, that he can adapt and take it and not get disheartened and fight through a weather and storm and come back and do what he's doing. Good work this from Horn. And I'm tempted to go a little bit further, whatever the outcome tonight, and say that Horn is proving himself, even though he's only 22, by long ways in against the best fighter he's fought in his career. And he's learning on the job and learning quick tonight. Absolutely. He's only had five contests. I mean, that is absolutely insane. 22 years of age, five contests. That was a lovely one too there. Body shot went in as well. Just forced the hands down from Wainwright. He's just giving ground here a little bit, Paul. Is he starting to come undone a little bit? Terrific stuff from Louis Horn, levelling it up or, or close to that for me, I will say, at this stage of the fight. Yep, I'm with you, Paul. I mean, there's not a lot in this contest now. Wayne Wright may just still have his nose in front, but not by a lot, that's for sure. I think Horn, when he sat down on his stool, said, who's round? And I, if I'd have been in the corner, I'd, I think I'd, I'd have been saying to him, I think it's your son. You did well there. Absolutely. Listen, this fight, one thing we can guarantee, this fight can be won and lost here in this last quarter. I mean, look at some of the action. Both guys standing their ground, taking the shots. No one willing to give up any ground. This is what boxing's all about. You know, these are the shows. That's why I'm glad TalkSport Boxing YouTube channel got involved in doing this, showing grassroots, because otherwise, you, the viewers, would not see what a great contest this is. You're not bad yourself. <laughs> On we go. Four rounds for it all to be decided either way. Both have had excellent moments. In patches, Wainwright has looked a really good operator. Louis Hall, for a lot of this fight tonight, has looked a kid with a big future. Oh, he certainly has. You know, I did say, you know, to what would Hall be like when we get in the penultimate rounds? Will the question marks creep in? Will the self-doubt creep in? You know, will he be able to do the distance? The answer, tick, tick, tick. This kid has shown that he's got all that. You know, respect where respect's due to team. We're supremely confident in the hotel earlier, but doing it and delivering it is two totally different things. The reality you know, is, is something totally, totally different. And he's proven. Horn dictating terms a little bit. Yeah, there's just a more solid look about Horn at the moment, isn't there? There's, uh, there's more of a fragile look, it's probably fragile is probably the wrong word to use, but what I'm saying is there's more of a solid look about Horn than there is Wainwright right now. Spencer, he's broken up the rhythm of Wainwright, hasn't he? That's what it is, and the body shots are taking their toll as well. Them shots really do hurt. You see Wainwright bending over when them shots are going in, and trust me, I've been there, I've been on the end of them, and I know what they feel like. His ribs are going to be sore tomorrow. He's biting down right now, Wayne, right? He's, he's going somewhere that not many people go. It's a dark place. It's a tough place. And only he can pull himself out of that. Home crowd are getting behind Keenan Wainwright. He needs that. 
The pace has certainly dropped, and I think that favours Horn, who sets himself a bit more and seems to be throwing the heavier shots. Yeah, because Wayne White has now dropped down to the single shots, the one-twos. That's what Horn's been doing since the beginning of the contest. So this pace suits Horn. It was the combination punches, the punches in bunches, the phase one, phase two, which Horn couldn't deal with. But Rain White hasn't been able to keep that going, that consistency going, and that has been a big problem for him in the second half of this contest. Oh, in and out by Horn was really excellent. Rain White's not closing the distance quickly enough. That's giving Horn the chance to set himself. Yeah, good work this from Horn, isn't it? He's got into a nice little rhythm, found a second wind here. Oh, big hook there from Horn as well. And Wayne he, White took that shot well, Paul. He did take it well, Spencer, but Wayne White's taking too long to get his shots off, and he may be getting tighter quicker than Horn. Absolutely, I think that's what we're witnessing right now, is that Horn has got a second win, he's found a rhythm, he's boxing lovely, and it's now Wayne White's turn to turn it all around. We've seen Horn do it, he's weathered the storm, he's come through that back patch, he's picked himself off the floor, now it's Wayne White's turn. And I'm not sure if he can do it in this late stage of the contest. It'll show us what sort of character he is, because if he can turn it around, it'll tell us he's a huge character, because that takes some, something really special in the last quarter of a contest. Look at the action here in this ninth round. Both guys trading blow for blow. No, neither guy wanting to give up any ground at all. This is what it's all about. Tremendous boxing at his best. Try picking a winner, everybody at home. Watch you with us tonight on Fight Zone and Talk Sport. Three to go. Yeah, going to be interesting how to see how this one goes, Paul. This can be won and lost, I think. Both guys know that, and they're both standing ground for ground. Well, the leg just went there. Was that a trip there from Wayne Wright? A bit of both, I think, but it kind of demonstrates that Wayne Wright's power has been diminished. He's taken a lot of big shots tonight. It's all a bit more laboured from Keenan Wayne Wright. Yeah, but both guys, Scott have taken something out of them, Paul. And both guys have taken a hell of a lot of punishment, but somehow they're finding something from somewhere. But championship fighters dig deeper than most. Championship fighters find a way in adversity. And sometimes they draw on a home crowd, and Wainwright's definitely got that here tonight. Absolutely. Listen, home, home, home crowd here could be crucial, you know, and I think that that could be a huge factor in keeping Wainwright in this contest, because I know that he'll be asking himself questions, as will Hall. Can I ask one question about Wainwright? Who, who I know he's a good, solid Southport operator, but when it started to be so much harder i've not seen him once switch or try something slightly different no nope. and he's just doing that now as you said that he's just starting to bite down and thinking right i've got to roll the dice here because it's slipping away from me yeah. you know glenn rose in the corner he's got a wealth of experience and he'd be saying listen listen son you need to do something here and if you that if you can't do it if you can't adapt and do it roll the dice and try and go and try and beat him at his own game and i think that's what we're seeing right now from wayne white who's just gone out there and he's gambling a little bit here the legs have slowed though a lot and that's really helped horn and it, yeah, that kind of a shot has been coming back the other way round after round after round none more so than right there spencer yeah, big right hand went in there, just forced the head back from Wayne Wright, but he's still pushing on, starting to canvas, starting to get slippery now, very hot in here, the sweat is making that canvas very slippery, both guys put so much into this one. From all around the arena, Wayne Wright's drawing on the support of Sheffield, but he needs it. Yeah, he's going to need every little bit of that right now. These rounds now are becoming very, very tough. The physicalities have gone out of this. This is all about the mental strength now. Who wants it most? Who can bite down on the gum shield? Who can find it from somewhere? Wainwright is forced back to the ropes. 
that's another show of power from Horn. What an effort. Yeah, what a contest that was. Absolutely brilliant. Well, we were told it was 12 and we was really enjoying that one, but it's Temple. Who wins the contest is one of those. It's a tough, tough fight to call that. Horn maybe have nicked it, but he had a 10 round, eight round against him. Tough one to call, really, really tough. Is this an answer? Wainwright early, Horn middle to late. I don't think it's much of an answer, but it's one way of describing the pattern of the fight. Wainwright got into his rhythm, looked really good, looked on top for three or four rounds, Spencer in the first half of the fight. But far from panicking, Horn regrouped, and I, I did hear his corner after the fourth round saying, we need to get into our rhythm. And what a job Horn has done of doing exactly that. Absolutely that, you know, credit where credit's due to both of these fighters, you know. That was a brilliant performance. Lewis Horn, 5-0 and with one KO before he come into this one, 22 years of age, puts in a performance like that, answered all the questions that needed to be answered. He's a winner tonight, whatever happens. This kid can come again, win or lose. And if he wins, it's going to elevate him to another level. He's going to be difficult to beat. He's tall, he's rangy, he's heavy-handed. A victory will make it very difficult for him to get beat. But for Wainwright, you know, that was a brilliant performance as well. I don't know what way this one goes, Paul. I may be leaning towards Horn. I think he may have done a little bit more down the back stretch, but you wouldn't argue either way. No, definitely not. I wouldn't argue seeing it again either. Getting caught up in the excitement there. Dennis Hobson just leaning over the ropes, talking to us, telling us, listen, I told you it was going to be a cracker, and it was a cracker. And we haven't needed a half an hour to collect the scores either, which always comes in handy. Massive hand all around the arena because that was a very high quality level of performance from both men, and it produced an outstanding fight and let's get the verdict now with Robert Blundell. Ladies and gentlemen, can we please have a massive round of applause for both of our boxers who gave us absolutely everything they had, a tremendous contest. After 10 rounds we go to our judges scorecards. When Michael Alexander has scored the contest, 96 points to 94 in favour of Louis Horn. Yeah. Howard Foster has scored the contest, 95 points to 94 in favour of Keenan Wainwright. Yeah. Reese Carter has scored the contest, 95 points to 94 in favour of your winner by split decision. And the new! So again, the cards first up in Horn's moment of triumph. It was close, 96-94, 95-94 the other way, and 95-94, Reese Carter's card in favour of Louis Horn. Tight, but nobody's going to argue that Horn did not produce an outstanding display away from home tonight although he's got a lot of Essex here with him let's be clear about that absolutely he certainly has he's got a great team with him Sam Gilly in the ring with him there as well he's got a great team around him and a deserved victory there for Louis Horn and more importantly for me he showed us what character he was he showed us that he could come through those rough patches and he could turn it around that is 
you know that was fantastic that performance he had to dig deep he had to find something from somewhere for a young man having only six contests 22 years of age i salute you sir brilliant performance spencer that's a startling breakthrough when you put it in those terms isn't it it's absolutely insane it really is i mean you know they're up there look at the crowd that he's pulled down there with him the self-belief i told you i spoke to him in a hotel you did before and uh yeah what a lovely bunch of lads and i'm, I'm pleased you know they got the victory and what i think they may take for it most spencer is the fact that when under pressure they found answers yeah absolutely i mean they both that they both did they both you know they both looked like they were coming apart a little bit and they both were able to turn it around i mean credit incredible performance from both guys here and um they deserve the respect that they got from the crowd that, that were watching and that was that's why i'm telling you about these small hall shows that you know the people the public don't get to see and now do get to see because of talk sports investment in that recognizing that and that is a classic example terrific spencer thank you very much indeed our own stacy copeland is in the ring and let's meet a uh, winner who has taken a giant step forward tonight stacy <laughs> louis goodness me just your sixth contest he came into his backyard just talk to us how does it feel to have that belt around your waist now mate it's mad i've had uh, own words i've had to dig deep for a few things indoors i've had to come for a lot of things this camp uh, and i've got my uh, thanks to my team it's mate i couldn't it's like a world title i'll be honest with you i couldn't I couldn't think of anything about. Well, you could see what it meant to you and the support that's come with you. got huge support, really vociferous support, really passionate supporting you. You said you've been through a lot in camp, but you had to go through a lot in here tonight. You got him hurt in the second round, but he came back unbelievable in the third and fourth. He put you under pressure. Talk to us about what it took for you to dig in and that mental resilience to get through those storms and weather them. I've, I've seen the dog in sand many a times, and it's one of them things where you have to be in the situation to bring it out. And thanks to my team, I called when I go back, I'm thrived up ready for the next round. If it ain't for these, I've done, I'm nothing. I know you've got huge belief in yourself. What does this say to you now? What's, what's next, and how does that help you in terms of that belief and confidence in reaching your ambitions in boxing? I haven't got a lot of belief in myself. If these have put me. Uh, if you would have told me I'd be here a year before, I'd laugh at you. I'd think you're an idiot. It's mad. Like, I... Well, you sh this should have proved to you that you deserve to be at this level. Finally, talk to us about what it means to have this kind of support that have been there, living and breathing every single punch with and against you in that fight. And just look at that crowd now, what it means to them. What does it mean to you to have that kind of support? That, that's lifting me off the floor when I was on the floor, man. It's some feeling. It's like a Rocky film. It is. I'll tell you what, it was a great performance. What a fight, both of you. And huge respect to Keenan Wainwright as well. Keenan was, was unbelievable. Right? Skin. I, just, I didn't think anything was beating me tonight. I'll be honest with you, nothing was beating Yeah, you both put on a fantastic it's fight. Amazing. The fans have absolutely loved it. Huge congratulations. We can't wait to see what's next. Well done. Enjoy the occasion. Well done. Brilliant, Stacey. Well done. Fantastic. Thank you very, very much indeed. An outstanding contest, we were promised. And our promoters tonight, Dennis Hobson and Fight Zone, have most certainly delivered that. It is the end of the night here. We'd like to thank everybody for joining us, both on Fight Zone and Talk Sport. We've seen a couple of kids who've been introduced to the British public tonight, who've clearly got a lot of talent, and we're looking forward to seeing them develop in the months and indeed the years to come but ahead of time at the age of 22 it is Lewis Horn's night most of all here in Sheffield Keenan Wainwright's a good fighter and will surely come again but what a victory for Lewis Horn in our top of the bill I'd like to thank Spencer Oliver my old buddy for being alongside me tonight this is Paul Dempsey signing off with thanks for all our crew great work everybody and uh, everybody for tuning in however you've done so tonight thank you and we'll see you again very soon indeed good night everybody